Hi guys, before we get into the video, I just wanted to let you know that I have a new song out. It's called How Could I Forget You? And she is an artsy queen. And this one is really personal and it would mean a lot if you guys want to check it out. There will be a link down below. Okay, that's all. Enjoy the reading. Bye! it's Kino welcome to another video so in today's pick a card we are going to be finding out how and when you will come together with your person so when I say your person this can really be anybody that you have in mind whether it is a soulmate twin flame connection your next partner your future spouse the person that you like um, it could even be a non-romantic connection such as a friendship um, there will likely be a lot of people who are watching this reading with a romantic connection in mind. So if you're watching for a non-romantic connection, just keep in mind that there may be some messages that won't apply to you and that you will have to filter out for your specific situation. I did this reading however many months back. It was a few months ago and I liked the format of that reading. I think I'm going to do it in the same way this time. So we will start by looking at the general energies of the connection between you and this person. And then for the how and when you'll come together part, we will do it like we'll have you on this side and we'll have your person on this side. And then we'll see with different cards the series of events that are finally going to lead you to your union and then we will have like a card in the middle that is representing your union so that you can see how the journey is going from both sides and what is going to happen or what needs to happen in order for the two of you to come into union and then once we look at that we will also be looking at the when like the specific time frames um but because it's a general reading and because time frames are not set in stone, I want to also look at what could potentially speed up this time or what could possibly slow down this time frame so that we sort of get a broader window that is subject to change and then also put some of the power to you, you know? So it's not just like, this is when it's gonna happen, deal with it, but this is what you could do to help move the process along or to help speed things up, or this is what your person could do on their end. Um, so I do want it to be pretty thorough and look at, you know, the different possibilities, but I think that's all in terms of explaining how this reading is going to go. So let's go ahead and show you guys your options. There are four readings for you to choose from today, and we have a different tarot deck and a different stone for each of your options. As you can see, this is what the decks look like from the back, but in just a second, I'm also going to show you guys a card, the two of cups from each deck so that you can get a feel for the front artwork as well. So you could be drawn to um, the stone, you could be drawn to the back of the deck, the front of the deck. There's a few different factors in choosing your group. It's totally fine if you are drawn to more than one group. There might be messages for you in several or there may be several people whom you're coming into union with. So please feel free to choose as many as you like for this one. But without further ado, let's go ahead and show you guys your options. Option number one, your stone is Dalmatian Jasper. Your deck is the Naked Heart Tarot, and this is the Two of Cups. Option number two, your stone is Spirit Quartz. Your deck is the Star Child Tarot, and this is the Two of Cups. Option number three, your stone, I think this is called titanium rainbow or titanium aura quartz something like that and your deck is the apparition tarot and this is the two of cups and option number four your stone is barite your deck is the antique anatomy tarot and this is the two of cups 
So just in case you need a bit more time to choose your group, here are all of your options laid out side by side so that you can compare them and see which one is calling to you the most. As always, take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started with number one. Hi, number ones. So if you guys chose the Dalmatian Jasper and the Naked Heart Tarot, this is going to be a reading all about how and when you'll come together with your person. So this reading is going to be quite in depth, but in short, basically, we will start off with an energy check to make sure that this is your group. Then we're gonna answer the how part of the question. Then we're gonna answer the when part. And when we do the when part, um, I'm not just going to give you a window of time, but I also wanna see um, what you could do or what your person might do that could speed up or slow down this process. So kind of see how your free will plays into the situation. But yes, let's get right into it. So I'm going to set aside this tarot deck for just a second. For the energy check part of this reading, we're going to use these oracle cards from different decks. If the connection that I'm describing here does sound like the connection between you and the person that you're thinking about, then keep watching. But if not, feel free to try another group. So to start off, wow, we're starting off with a powerful energy. We have crown chakra, creativity, soul mating, geez. <laughs> okay, what else do we have for group number one? We have condor, cycles, reflection, perspective, release. All that glitters oh my god are these gonna fit <laughs> I there are two more let me see okay I think they should fit then we have answers and finally wildflower with the message freedom all right so um, a couple things I'm noticing that are kind of cool for one, I feel like the letter C is repeating a lot. Crown, chakra, creativity, condor, cycles. So the letter C might be significant. It could be somebody's initial, first or last name. It could be Cancer, Capricorn. Um, it could be the name of a city or a country, like where this person is from or where you guys met or where you are from. Same thing with the letter A. We have repeating A's here as well. So that could be like August, April, Aries, Aquarius, um, things like that. But the other thing I'm noticing is that we have mirroring numbers. On the crown chakra card, we have the number 43. And on the soul mating card, we have the number 34. So there is some mirroring action going on here. And what's really cool about these numbers is that three is the number of the empress and four is the number of the emperor. So this is like divine masculine, divine feminine energy that we have going on here. The fact that they're mirrored is making me think that maybe one of you is more um, in your feminine energy, more expressing your feminine energy right now, and you're in the process of working on getting in touch with, embracing, and really bringing out your masculine side, and then the other one of you would be going through like the opposite. So there's kind of like the yin and yang counterparts energy going on here. I think I'm going to leave these next to each other because they probably <laughs> they probably want to be next to each other. With the crown chakra card here, straight up this is a psychic connection like there's no other way I can interpret this. So you could receive downloads about this connection. You could have dreams about this connection. You could have um, some telepathy going on with this person where you know their thoughts, you know how they're feeling, you know where they are, you know what they're doing without any um, indication of this in the 3D. It's just a knowing that you get. You just know and then it happens to be true. There could be times where you kind of feel their presence and then a few minutes later they text you or a few few minutes later you open up your phone and they've like just posted something um there could be a lot of signs and synchronicities as well I'm hearing like freaked out <laughs> there might be something about this connection that has freaked you out like the serendipity of how you came together or the way that they just always show up at very specific moments like when you just happen to be thinking about them they show up or you just had a dream about them and then something happens um it feels like what's going on, I'm hearing like as above, so below, like what's going on in the 5D 
very often like something will pop up into 3D as well. Um, I think that you guys have definitely felt there is a deep spiritual connection to this person. I probably don't need to confirm this to you, but for what it's worth, here I am confirming this to you. Um, I'm also feeling like it's not uncomfortable, but just a sharp, <laughs> it sounds funny, but a sharp pain around where my third eye is. I don't think this is like spirit trying to hurt me or anything, but just to bring that area to my attention. Um, I'm fine, don't worry. But yeah, we also have soul mating here. So like, literally, what like what do you want me to tell you? This person is your soul mate. <laughs> um, you know, with these hands up in the prayer position, this could be someone that you have wished for, someone you, someone that you've been trying to manifest. I really like that we have the sword in the middle of the heart because swords have to do with truth and clarity. So I do feel like this is somebody that you're very, very sure about. Or this image could also be here to really reassure to you that you know, what you feel in your heart is real. What you feel in your heart is the truth. Maybe some of you guys do need that validation that what you've been experiencing here um, is the truth. Like that's the truth of this connection. With creativity, it could be that you are a creative or this person is creative. It could be that as part of your coming together, you will be creating something together, whether that is art, whether that is a business, um, an invention, uh, a humanitarian cause as well, a family. I feel like you will birth something into the world that is part you and part this person. Um, it could be more specifically that they're an artist or you're an artist, but it doesn't have to be. Um, you know, creativity comes in many different forms. Um, but it could also be that this person's higher self communicates to you through the art. So you might have lyrics jump out at you in a song and this is their higher self talking to you. Or um, like if you're watching a movie, one of the lines or just, you know, the storyline of the movie is like very, very relevant. Um, and then it would be that like their higher self led you to this art so that you would consume it, so that you would get the messages that you need to get. The number three is reminding me of the third house. I'm sorry if I'm talking really fast, by the way. I'm just very excited. <laughs> um, the number three is about the third house, which is all about communication. So I do think that like creative arts and things like that could be a way that they talk to you. And if this person makes art, they might talk to you through their own art. Um, with Condor here, we have the messages cycles reflection perspective and release cycles it definitely makes me think of reincarnation so it could definitely be like not your first time around with this soulmate um, but it could also refer to cycles that are happening within this lifetime so this might be um a kind of relationship where you come together and then you kind of come apart and do your own thing and come back together, at least in the 3D, because we know that in the soul world, you guys are never really apart. Um, but with like reflection, perspective, release, I'm sort of getting this vibe of two people who come together and they're activated by each other in some ways. And then they have some time apart to process that experience they have some time apart to heal to release to go through some sort of energetic upgrades and then they kind of come back together as like new and improved versions of themselves i feel like this is a connection where you'll really get to see each other's growth and each other's evolution um both in the 3d sense as well as in the spiritual sense um this all that glitters card is very interesting too and i'm being drawn to the number 16 on it which is reminding me of the tower in tarot that's the number that's associated with the tower so um this could be someone who really really shook your life up even if you haven't met them in person yet i feel like just uh, feeling their energy and just knowing that they're out there existing has a really, really strong impact on you. Tower gives me this feeling of, it's a very dramatic shift and it's this feeling of nothing will ever be the same. Like since you met this person or since you were activated by their energy, it might feel like you would never quite be the same. Your life would never quite be the same. I'm hearing that you would not be satisfied by the same things anymore. You guys might feel that after you've experienced a partnership with this person, or just been around their energy, like it, it's hard to be satisfied with the same types of connections as before. This is a very, very hypothetical example. So it doesn't have to necessarily be what you're going through, but you know, let's say 
there was somebody who was in more casual relationships, friends with benefits relationships, but then once they meet this soulmate, it's like, man, I don't really get the same satisfaction out of that kind of relationship anymore because now I felt what a soulmate connection feels like. It just doesn't really, it doesn't really hold a candle to that. So it's almost like other partnerships or other, you know, dynamics could pale in the comparison of this connection. Um, another thing I'm looking at with this card is the masks. So, you know, with this tower moment, this can also be about kind of shocking or uncomfortable revelations. And especially because you guys mirror each other, you might find that this connection makes you realize in what ways you've been wearing a mask throughout your life, in what ways you've sort of been playing out the role of who you think you should be going through the world with this persona. Um, and I think this connection challenges you to rip that mask off and look in the mirror and see what really lies underneath. And that can be a very scary experience. Like when you start to really look at yourself for who you are, for the light and the shadow, that's freaking scary. And it, it takes a lot of courage. And I think that in many ways you, you came into each other's lives or you will come into each other's lives to be... Um, to be a catalyst for this. I just heard like no more bullshit. Like we're ripping the mask off, okay? And you're inspiring each other to become authentic. And I think another thing that this connection makes you realize with this, you know, all that glitters is not gold. It's like real love is worth fighting for. A real connection is worth fighting for. It's worth, um, it's worth putting in the work. And I feel like you guys, I'm just, I don't know if this is everybody, but I'm feeling the energy of someone who might get kind of frustrated when like they hear people talking about soulmate connections and that, oh, when I find my soulmate, everything's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be solved. And someone sitting there and hearing that kind of narrative and being kind of, I don't know if annoyed is the right word, but it's like, no nah, man, like it's still a relationship. It's still, it still takes work. In fact, soulmate relationships can take a lot of work because they're here to help you grow because they're here to help you heal like just because it's a soulmate relationship it doesn't mean it's a walk in the park but you know what it's a walk it's a journey that is worth taking that i would do a million times over it's like you're realizing like I don't want this fake fairy tale, peachy, everything is sunshine and rainbows. I want like the raw, real relationship with the ups and downs, with the good and the bad, with the light and the shadow, because that's what makes us human. You're like, I want all of it. I don't want like a curated fake version of it where we sweep things under the rug. I feel like I just keep hearing the word raw. Like this connection has really broken you open and made you face the version of yourself that is raw and authentic and that is really really brave and yes again i'm hearing like no more bullshit <laughs> this connection and maybe that's why the sword is is piercing through your heart the sword of truth and clarity is finally revealing to you what's inside your heart and who you truly are um with answers here i definitely think this is referring to you on your journey of self-discovery um, it could also be that you guys are looking for a lot of answers when it comes to this connection. It does look like you definitely know there's something special here and that, you know, this is your soulmate. This is a person you're connecting to in the spiritual realm. But maybe you're quite concerned with answers about like how as well you're on this reading. So how is this all going to play out? When When is this all going to come together? But with freedom right next to this, and I know this is going to sound ironic because I'm about to dive in and look into this how and when question. Um, but with this freedom card here, I do feel like your guides might be encouraging you to free yourself from these worries. Um, and yeah, with release too, almost like you don't have to know all of the details. You don't have to know all of the how and whens. And as long as you're very concerned with that, I think that you'll never feel truly free. I think you have to move through life knowing like whatever I do, it's all going to work out because if you're very, very concerned with like the how and when and the, the destiny aspect of it, then you're going to move through the world. Like what if I take 
this step in the wrong direction and and I stray away from my destiny? Or what if this decision I make is going to delay our union or it's going to bring us farther away from each other? And that is just no way to live. You deserve to live freely. Wildflowers blossom up wherever the heck their seed happens to germinate. I remember that. I think that's in the guidebook of this deck. Like, they're going to grow anywhere and they're going to thrive anywhere. So this is your spiritual team. And I also think your person's higher self coming through to say, no matter where you go, I'm going to find you. No matter where you choose to um, plant your seed and blossom, then that's where we're going to be. And that's where we're going to find our union. So I think that maybe what we're going to be looking at in the next part of the reading when we get into the tarot is how you guys will come together based on your current trajectory. Because I'm definitely getting the feeling for this group um, that there are many different ways in which you could come together because that's what your souls really want. And it, it doesn't matter where you go, what you do, what decision you make, it'll happen. And I don't want to, I guess I don't want to do the next part of the reading of how you come together and for you to watch it and be like, okay, I have to stick to this then. Like, this is the plan that I have to stick to or else we're not going to come together. Or watch it and think, oh no, that doesn't sound like what I'm currently doing. Um, and get, uh, you know, discouraged. Because, yeah, broken record. There's many different ways for you guys to come together. And the reason I say, like, it doesn't matter what you do, it will happen, is because I know that deep down this is something that both of you guys really want. Of course, if you change your mind someday and you didn't want to be with this person, it doesn't have to happen. But this is like your spiritual team's promise to you. As long as you want this and as long as you have that clarity in your heart, it's going to happen. So yeah, what we're going to look at in this deep dive part is how you're likely to come together based on your current energy. And in no way does it mean if you don't come together like this, you don't come together at all. I just wanted to make that clear and give you that bit of uh, reassurance. But okay, so I'm gonna take a sip of my water and let's get into the deep dive section of this reading. So I'm gonna do this in the same format that I did it last time, all of those months ago, where we're gonna have you on this side and we're gonna have your person on that side and we'll just pull cards bringing you closer and closer to the middle. So the cards will be in chronological order of like, you know, the sequence of events leading up to your union for you and for your person and then your union is smack in the middle. All right, group number one are Dalmatian, Jasper, and Naked Heart Tarot. Let's start over on your side. Okay, so the first card that we have is the Three of Cups. Then we have Death. Oh, interesting. That's a very specific message. Then we have the universe, and this is the world. For your person, actually, let me just do another one of these. For your person, we have the five of cups. Then the Innocence of Pentacles. So that's the Page of Pentacles. You know what? Then we have the Magician and the Five of Pentacles. And then the card to represent your union is the Sun. Oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, so what I was going to say... Um, first of all, we have four Major Arcana, which is very, very significant. I'm like surprised because I'm impressed but like at the same time I'm not surprised because like <laughs> you remember the energy we spoke about before um I was gonna say I feel like the messages for this group are very clear which is cool because I felt like they're very clear for the oracle card part as well like crown chakra soulmate <laughs> um 
But yeah, I guess when it comes to signs and synchronicities about this person or about your connection, it looks like your spiritual team is quite clear and quite literal and so is your higher self. So with that in mind, I think you wouldn't need to decipher that much, for, you know? So like, if you have a dream that you're kissing this person, it means that they want to kiss you. <laughs> if you have a dream that you got married to this person, it means that you're going to get married. It's like um, quite literal. And that's not to say you won't get more symbolic stuff, but uh, I feel like you can definitely take signs and synchronicities at face value. And I think that if you feel like something is a sign, if you feel like something is a message from your spiritual team, like it, it is. Um, so in terms of zodiac signs here, we have Scorpio, we have Leo, and I think I'm going to leave it at that, but I do feel called to, you know what, I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> Just because there's animals on this deck, I was thinking, oh, maybe I could whip out my spirit animal book, but there's a lot of animals, so maybe if I feel like it's relevant to do so, I might crack that book open, but let's let's start over here on your side. So group one, the very specific message that I got for you guys when these cards came out is that you got to cut off some friends or you, you have to distance yourself from some kind of community. Um, the three of cups, it, it could indicate a friend group, it could be um, an online community or like a fandom of some kind. It could also be, it could even be co-workers or classmates or some commitment that you have where you're hanging around the same group of people. It could even be family for some of you. But anyway, it's, it's a group of people that you get together with and spend a lot of time with. And what I'm seeing with this three of cups is that while there might be some, well, there might be some very fun times for others of you, there might not. <laughs> um, but I, I'm feeling with the Three of Cups this kind of petty energy, like people are gossiping or people are just talking and spending a lot of their energy on trivial things. Um, small talking or just talking about other people or even like spreading rumors or talking negatively about other people or just like getting their panties in a bunch about things that don't really matter and I feel like at one point you could have really identified with this group and I think that you still feel very grateful for this group it's just that you've matured at a faster pace than them it feels like you've kind of outgrown the energy of this community or of this um friend group and so for this to be your first card in the journey I feel like when you're activated by this person so to speak um, or when their energy first comes to visit you whether that's in person or in the 5d it might coincide with the time where you're starting to feel like eh, maybe this group is not for me you know when you're starting to consider maybe leaving this group leaving this commitment is around yeah around the same time so if you haven't been activated by this soulmate yet like you don't know who they are or you haven't felt their energy yet and if you're in this energy right now then congratulations because <laughs> they're coming into your life soon and then i think the death card that comes after this is like very much a continuation of that death talks about release it talks about moving on and never looking back um while i did say cut off or create distance with the death card here, I actually kind of feel that for many of you, making a clean break will be the best. Of course, it's your life and you will know your situation better than me and what's best for you. Um, but, you know, death is, at least in the physical world, the death of our body is permanent. And once a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, it can't turn back into a caterpillar. I think that you guys have evolved into a butterfly and you're still hanging out with caterpillars. And it's not like nothing against caterpillars, man. Like <laughs> every butterfly was a caterpillar at some point and that caterpillar, like bless him, he ate all of those leaves and twigs and stuff so that we could become the butterfly that we are today. We have to look back with gratitude, but at the same time, the butterfly is doing a disservice to themselves by staying in this crew of caterpillars. The butterfly needs to find their 
their butterfly tribe because the longer they stick around, it's like, man, I don't have much to talk about with you guys anymore. I can't really relate to the path that you're on and I feel like you can't relate to mine. And, you know, maybe, and maybe it starts to feel very one-sided where like you think that you can or you can give a lot of advice and guidance and insight to this community or these people, but they can't really enrich your life in any way. And again, that's not to judge them, but it's to take good care of yourself. And we really, really have to nurture ourselves by who we keep around us. And so with this, I think comes a journey of self-love and self-respect for you. Like I nourish myself with food and water and oxygen i nourish myself with the the ideas and the content i consume and i also owe it to myself to nourish myself with relationships and i need to be around people who are on my wavelength and who stimulate me intellectually and who support me emotionally and get me like that's what i owe myself so yeah i think that for many of you this death might be a clean break and i'm not sure exactly what this symbol is supposed to be but it is reminding me of the north node um, which is like the North Node is where you're headed. It's the, the direction that your soul wants to go in. It's, um, I think in Western astrology, it refers to your calling. It's a bit of a different interpretation in, in Eastern astrology, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm going to roll with that. Like you're flying away towards your calling. You are making a clean break. And then we have the universe here, the world. So some of you guys might actually be okay there's two different interpretations please feel free to claim both or just um one or the other and i actually think i am going to be um well we'll have to check the book but <laughs> if the b is in there i do think that i'm gonna read the interpretation for the b um there's a b um <laughs> anyway sorry you know that vine my name is michael with a b and i've been afraid of insects my whole life um so one interpretation of this is that you guys could be like traveling somewhere else. You could be moving somewhere else because, you know, the world travel, obviously, that's one interpretation. Um, if that's something you guys have been wanting to do. It's funny because in 2021, I was always reading this card as the year 2021 because it's the 21st card. Um, but of course, now we're beyond that but it could be like you've been wanting to travel to this place since 2021 or you've been planning for it since then or something like that so for the past like year if you're watching this when it's uh, uploaded but the other interpretation with the universe is like success and and fame and accomplishments and and being admired so isn't it interesting like this little bug escaped the hand the skeleton hand and is now thriving and blossoming and living their best life. I am wondering if these three of cups people were holding you back in some way, whether it could have been a subconscious thing where you just um, sabotage yourself from growing and making progress and achieving your goals. Um, Cause like you felt guilty about outshining your peers or something like that, or it could have been more, overt from this group you know they could have indirectly or directly talked you out of pursuing certain things or you know subtly or not so subtly knocked you down in some ways or showed signs of like envy which you know being envied is a ugh, it's like an icky feeling so you know you might have subconsciously been trying to avoid that and just stay at their level to not ruffle any feathers to maintain the peace and stuff like that and and i think that once this energy is cleared away, it's like suddenly there's no stopping you. You're thriving. You're hitting all of your goals. Like you have a new lease on life. I'm going to let me see if a bee is in here. I would be shocked if it isn't because there's it's a very comprehensive book. Yes, B. It's time to get organized and get to work on that idea you want to implement and develop. Approach your projects with commitment, diligence, and dedication, and you'll succeed beyond your wildest expectations. Involve several others in a cooperative and life-affirming venture, one in which everyone who participates will benefit, and if possible, one that involves the entire community. Isn't it interesting that you guys had, like, you're creating something together with this person, um, 
but this is where your individual journey stops. So, um, for you guys, if you're in this energy right now, if you're in this B energy, if you're in this world energy, then congratulations, because that means that the next step is union with your person. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but you know, you could identify with any section of this journey and see like where you're at. Um, is there a beetle as well? No, there isn't. That would have been fun to read for a beetle, but um, anyway, so let's move on now to the energy of your person. So for their initial energy, we have the five of cups. This is a card that talks about loss, disappointment. It's interesting that literally all of the cups are spilling because normally in the five of cups, we would have, usually it's three cups are spilled, two cups are not spilled. And I feel like there's some variations of that from deck to deck, but it's interesting, like, all of these cups are either knocked over or they're in the process of falling over. And the blue heart is so big in this card. So I think that this is like their higher self is clarifying to me. Like this isn't just some kind of spilled milk. Like, oh man, what a disappointment. This is a full on heartbreak that they're going through or that they will or that they were going through when they were activated by your energy for the first time. I am sort of getting the feeling that this is a breakup and I'm totally seeing, I'm totally seeing uh, the mirroring now. <laughs> and you will, you'll notice like as I start to, um, as I start to go through their journey, how it's quite similar to yours. Um, but yes, I think that this is a breakup because of the emphasis on the heart. It feels like, something that where emotions were very heavily invested. This is also the naked heart tarot. So I have this feeling of like, I bore my heart to somebody. I exposed my heart to somebody and they, they either stomped all over it or life circumstances happened and we had to drift apart from each other. But there was like a, a sad separation or a sad heartbreak that this person went through. Um, could have been even a divorce, like if, if this person is at that stage in their life. Um, but next we have the Innocence of Pentacles or the Page of Pentacles. And so it's, I think, ah, it's very cute that this is a, I think this is a little calf. So cows, the spirit animal of cows talks about abundance. It's like related to Taurus energy. So maybe Taurus energy is significant. Um, but yeah, it's related to abundance. And I feel like I feel like this person had an idea to make them very abundant or they just had the desire in their heart um, to start a business venture or, you know, to become very uh, wealthy in their life. And I think it's very cute that the cow is a baby because it probably means that at this point they hadn't put much action into their plan yet it was just something that they thought about they didn't really work on it yet so it's still a little baby with so much potential and you see how the little baby calf is just sitting and waiting patiently waiting patiently for your person to look up and pay attention to them and put effort into them maybe this is their calling like we had your calling here with the north node i feel like this little baby calf is representing um is representing their calling. And I think that this little baby calf knew deep down that this relationship, this connection that broke up was not conducive to their, to your person's highest self and to them living their best life. Much like you, for you, I think it was more a group of people or a community uh, that wasn't conducive to your highest self. And this calf is like, hmm, okay, the winds of change are blowing now because the number five is about change. Maybe, maybe group one's person is finally going to pay attention to me. And I think that they did. I think that they probably got into this at first as a way to distract themselves, as a way to recover from the heartbreak. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes if I remember I had an ex who after we broke up, he got like really, really into uh, like bodybuilding. Um, it's like after you break up, you're like, you know what? I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to put efforts into myself. And I think it's half like 
you know, you're independent again and you're coming back to yourself and it feels very, very good to just focus on you and nurture you after you've been pouring so much of your energy into someone else for so long. Um, but for this person, I feel like half of it is also uh, like a distraction, you know, like I just got to push through the pain. I'm going to focus on this project you know, I, or maybe this breakup was like a wake up call for them of like, what am I doing with my life? I have this calling. I gotta, I gotta focus on it now. Um, so I think that that's what the page of pentacles is representing a new project, a new business venture. Um, and next we have the five of pentacles and the magician. So I think that this venture is something that they would have invested a lot of money into or that they would not make a lot of money on at first or both because the five of pentacles talks about financial lack and we can see that very clearly in this card because we have the string of pearls we have the diamond that is broken maybe this person had to uh sell something in order to get the money to invest in this project or business if this was a divorce maybe they lost a lot of material possessions or a lot of money throughout that process. Of course, that's pro probably gonna resonate with a smaller group of you. Um, I think it's more so that they're investing a lot into their project, into their idea. And But I really, really like that we have the magician here. These came out at the same time because the magician is about your will and believing in yourself that you can create anything, that you can manifest anything you set your mind to. And I feel like the magician is very, very powerful. This baby calf, this Taurus energy is very, very stubborn and persistent. And that stubborn energy is going to be amazing here. Um, so I really don't think that this financial lack or you know having to invest all of this money or not making a lot of money at first is gonna really phase your person because they're in magician mode they're like i don't care <laughs> i'm gonna keep going for it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna make it happen um and i'm just remembering in the angel tarot the five of pentacles says uncertain self-employment so it's very very fitting here and this is a little bit sad but i'm also feeling this message of like, my heart's already broken. So, you know, I have nothing to lose, which I feel really sad saying that, but that might be something that, that might be something that goes through their mind. And I think that as they start to focus on this project and focus on their passion more and channel their magician energy and believe in themselves, they realize like they start to mend their broken heart and they start to realize like, all I need is me. That's, that's, badass magician energy all i need to have my dream life and to be happy is me and it doesn't mean that i don't need connections it doesn't mean that i don't need people but there's no like one specific person that i need to cling on to or put on a pedestal or prove myself to or feel inferior i just need to commit to my best self and then i know that the connections who are committed to us and committed to being their best self will come hence <laughs> hence why your union is right after this um and i love that the sun is here because you know if you think about this person's gone through a dark time you guys have gone through a dark time this is like the sun is rising again it's really really beautiful um you guys might meet in circumstances where one of you is being showcased in some way where one of you is presenting one of you is performing because i do get that vibe with the sun or both of you um it could be like you're or you're at a conference or something where someone else is performing presenting or speaking just or it could even be a wedding or something like just in an environment where someone is in the spotlight whether that's you or them or a third person, that is the vibe that I get with uh, sun energy. Um, and I do feel that in some way it would be a kind of creative environment because that's something with the sun as well. It talks about creativity and creative projects. And, you know, both of you are very much in that mode before coming together where you're like, yeah, I'm creating my dream life. So I think when you come together, you really, really... Uh, inspire each other. I also love the sun talks about your inner child. So you can totally be your goofy, <laughs> your goofy self around each other from, from day one. I think you have so much fun. And even if you were meeting where there's a lot of other people, it will feel like you're the only people in the room or you could mingle. And I feel like everybody would love you, but <laughs> you just, you don't need anything to be entertained. You just need each other and you're 
mouth to talk and you will have、uh, the best time. And I feel like you might even start imagining about what you can create together right from the beginning, right from your initial. Meeting and you know, for this to be the overall energy of your union, this is showing like this is a relationship where you're always going to be giving each other hope for tomorrow, and you're always going to be inspiring each other, and it never gets boring, and it never gets old, and you never get tired of each other.、Uh, you're so grateful for every day. I feel like this journey. Is showing how you come together in like a 3D physical union. It was kind of giving me first meeting vibes, but if you've already met this person or know of this person and you're going through this right now, of course you can interpret this as like your romantic union or your business union or when you're getting into that committed relationship.、Um, but this is what I see for your respective journeys. So now we're going to take a look at the when part.、Uh, like I mentioned before, we're going to look at the different time frames and then we're going to see what could speed this up or what could slow this down. So first, let's look at what the shorter, what could the shorter time frame be for this union? What's the shorter one?、Um, so we have first quarter immediately, that's making me think of three months, because like quarter of the year is three months. And then what could be the longer one? We have, okay, <laughs> there's a lot that w a n t to come out. We have void, of course, 11th house, and Feminine. So, 11th house could be that's Aquarius energy. I wonder what void, of course, means. 11th house, I'm going to say,、uh, refers to Aquarius season. So, okay, let's say, for example, at the time that you're watching this, Aquarius season is already in the next three months. I feel like this is talking about. The following year. Does that make sense? So, like January or February of the next year.、Mm -hmm. And then, ah, okay. I'm already getting a hint of what could make things slower with this void of course and feminine energy because void of course usually means that. Nothing is going to come from a situation. And feminine is a more receptive and passive energy. So, this is kind of giving me the feeling that if you take a more passive role in this connection, like if you just kind of wait and not say anything and not do anything, that is what could make this happen the following year. It will still happen, but it will be slower. And so, what your guides are saying is you taking action, you speaking up, you being open about how you feel. It is going to make things go faster. Even if you open up about how you feel,、um, and in the moment nothing happens, and you're like, see, taking action didn't do anything. It's not true because every time you take action, every time you, you speak out or reach out to this person or plant a seed, yeah, it plants a seed. It plants a seed for them. And they will think about what you said and it will push them forward. So, action taking. And maybe it's you who's learning how to get more into your masculine energy. All right, so we're looking at one last tarot deck and we're going to see. What would you have to do, or what would have to happen? Oh, look, <laughs> we have Mars and Leo. Yeah. So it's taking action. You see, this person has war paint on, <laughs> and she's like, let's go, let's get it. So it's like the more you're in your masculine energy, the more you're in your warrior energy, Mars is all about taking action, Leo is all about being confident, then. You know, things could start happening within the next three months. And maybe this is you taking action, like 
it remember it depends where you're at in this journey maybe this is you taking action to leave this community behind maybe this is you taking action to move or to start on your dream career maybe this is you taking action to reach out to this person if you already know who they are but this is a very clear message too more action equals shorter time and the shorter time is within three months so let's also take a tarot card to see what could make it this slower time frame and we have the four of wands with venus in aries so this is the way it's coming to me after sitting and looking at this image for some time the four of wands is a happy card it talks about unions it can talk about weddings people coming together and being happy but you see how usually there would be like a couple getting married or some people dancing together or coming together in this card and here there is just this one centaur there's no one under here and there's just the center playing the violin and i was thinking about you know how like people play the violin and it's like sad music so it's like in the face of achieving your happiness if you're more in the energy of like feeling sorry for yourself or lamenting about the way things are or regretting the past, that could slow things down. It's a confident, a confident and optimistic energy that would speed things up. And it's a discouraged and even I could say like self pitying energy um, that would slow things down. It's interesting that we have a centaur here because that's related to Sagittarius energy. And usually when that comes out for time frames, it does make me think of a new year because Sagittarius is like right at the end of the year. So it could happen in the next three months or it could happen like, I think in about like 11 months or a year or something like that. So it's kind of a big window. Um, maybe you'll fall somewhere in between there, but I think the main takeaway is like, confidence good <laughs> confidence good action good i think that's definitely what these cards are trying to tell you even aries is like very much a go-getter energy so group number one and first of all i love this deck because thank you so much for putting the um the minor arcana zodiac associations I, it drives me crazy trying to remember them and to have them right here that's awesome this is the white fly tarot uh, i'm gonna link it it's a really amazing deck but group one those are all the messages i have for you so i'm gonna end your reading here thank you very very much for letting me do this reading for you i hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and i wish you all the best please take good care of yourself stay healthy don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you feel like doing that i also have a patreon so if you're interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic that will be linked down below too and i have a music channel the song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song so if you're interested and checking out that one or any of my other songs the music channel will be linked down below too i'm sending so much love to you to your person to your spiritual teams and i will see you guys in the next one bye bye hi number twos so if you guys chose the spirit quartz and the star child tarot oh my gosh look how beautiful it's shining this is going to be your reading all about how and when you'll come together with your person so this reading is going to be pretty thorough but basically uh, we're going to start off with an energy check to make sure this is your group then we will answer the how part of this question then we will answer the when part of this question and when we do the when part that's a lot of whens <laughs> um, not only are we going to look at like specific time frames but we are also going to pull some cards to see what could possibly speed up this process and what could possibly slow it down so this means that your free will and the free will of your person um, of course does come into play so we'll see like what could you do or what might your person do to change the timeline but let's get right into it i'm just going to set this aside for a second because for the energy check we're going to be using these oracle cards um i was kind of struggling <laughs> to fit them all on the i guess on the screen <laughs> um with group one but 
Hopefully I will do a better job this time. I also wanted to mention I just saw 1111 or no 111 on the camera, but repeating ones could be significant. Um, I'm also hearing too hot to handle. So I know that that's a TV show, but that could be speaking to like passion in this connection. It feels quite vibrant. It feels like it makes you feel alive. I'm also hearing like irresistible. So we have some pretty strong energy coming through right off the bat. Um, all right, let's just, let's just take a look at your cards. So the first one that we have, and look, there she is again, the number 11, emotions, feelings, expression, moods, balance. We have healing with the number 66. So we have repeating ones. We also have repeating number six. Let go. Wood, growth, connection, support, and renewal. I should also point out that 37 reduces to one. So there's even more ones. Then we have to the sea. That's so funny when I said to the sea. Now you can hear some water trickling. <laughs> um, well-being. And amaryllis with pride. Whenever I say or read the name of this flower, I think first things first, amaryllis. I feel like it was a Tumblr post at some point, but anyway, that's a reference to Fancy by Iggy Azalea and Charlie XCX. All right, so... Yeah, there's some intense energy going on here. I'm not really surprised to see this. I will just go through these cards in order. So we're starting off with emotions here. Um, that's so funny too. There's a lot of like water running sounds going on in the background. And I'm just thinking how water signs are associated with emotions. So maybe you or this person is a water sign. Um, and there's even little water droplets here. And if I'm not mistaken, because this is a chakra oracle, this card is associated with the sacral chakra, which is also associated with water. So it just seems like water is very significant. Um, maybe you live by a body of water or this person does. Um, but this card looks kind of chaotic to me, if I'm being honest. It looks like this person's head is like moving back and forth so fast that you can't see where it is. And I'm also hearing the word like whiplash. This could be a connection that has been quite an emotional roller coaster for you, or it is quite an emotional roller coaster. Like the highs are high and the lows are lows. Um, I do feel called to say that this can apply even if this person is not in your life yet, because it could be something like the process of waiting for this person is an emotional roller coaster, or your 5D connection is an emotional roller coaster. Sometimes you feel really good about this connection, and other times you might feel quite hopeless. Um, if I'm if I am being honest, I do feel a little bit of like instability when I look at these cards. On one hand, I think it's beautiful that this person and this connection can make you feel things so strongly, but when we're having these kind of intense fluctuations of feelings, it can be quite draining. It can be quite exhausting. And we also have healing and let go after this. I feel like this may be a connection where you are in separation or you have been in separation or the universe is kind of holding off on bringing the two of you into union right now because one or both of you might need to work on um work on balancing your emotions the number six is also about balance harmony and health uh, someone might be cultivating more emotional health and cultivating more um, emotional stability right now and more independence as well with the number 11. The number one is all about like the self and your confidence and your independence and you know being focused on you. So there could be someone in this connection who at one point and it could be both of you as well, like maybe put the other person on a pedestal a little bit or put too much of their emotional well-being into this connection. Like, are we in union or not? Is this person feeling in a positive way or a negative way? Are they communicating with me or not? Um, and these little fluctuations throughout the duration of this connection could have felt like really big 
um, like a really big emotional roller coaster. And I feel with this card, there was a need to heal. There was a need for someone to kind of look within and say, why does this person affect me so much? Um, and, and to look deeper past like, oh, I feel very intensely because I like them or I feel very intensely because they're my soulmate and just go a layer deeper and like, no, really, like what what is causing this intense attachment? Because you can be someone's soulmate and you can be crazy about someone, but still maintain your inner peace despite what is going on in the outside world. And, and still um, like there's that song, it's just a little crush, not like I faint every time we touch, not like everything I do depends on you. Um, I'm not gonna sing the whole song, but it's that kind of feeling. Like you, you can still have someone who's very, very significant in your life and have an intense spiritual bond, but it's not like everything they do is gonna impact you or you know every little thing is gonna affect your emotions in such an intense way. So I don't know if it was one of you or both of you, but I think there was really a need to address that and a need to heal. And these two cards next to each other, we have let go and then we have growth, connection, support, renewal. I kind of feel like the universe is saying that letting go and maybe going into this period of separation was the healthiest thing or is the healthiest thing for the connection at this time. And I'm also hearing the phrase like, if you love someone, let it go. And if, like, if they come back, that's how you know, or whatever it is. Like if they come back, then you'll know that it's meant to be. I definitely want to emphasize that this does not necessarily mean that like this person is toxic for you or this connection is toxic or anything like that, because I feel like this uh, emotional journey or emotional roller coaster that you've been through, it, it has to do with inner work. It has to do with your inner journey. So you could heal and become healthier and come back and have a very healthy relationship with this person. So I just, I don't want it to come off like I'm saying this person or this connection is bad for you. In fact, I think it could be the very opposite because this is someone who will catapult you into a journey of healing and into a journey of self-discovery and I do think with the repeating numbers here especially the number 11 that you were meant to meet this person um looking at wood as well and see as well these could be like significant parts of the person's name so like for example my last name is under wood or I think in other languages as well there's, I'm thinking like Dubois is a French last name. It means like of the wood. Um, and like a lot of Japanese last names have tree or wood meaning in it. And as well as C. And whatever your language is or, you know, this person's background, there could be something about wood or trees or there could be something about the C in their name. I feel called to uh, mention that as well. As well as like proud or pride like a strong, robust kind of name. That's gonna be very different across different languages, but um, I wanted to mention that. And maybe there's emphasis on this person's name because perhaps like symbols of their name kind of follow you around. So like, I don't know, if they had something about a mountain in their last name, then like you see mountains everywhere or something like that. Um, also the paw print feels significant to me. Um, Maybe this person has a pet, a companion animal that you have a really close bond with or animals will be important signs for you. Like if you see a certain animal, it's a sign of their higher self. Um, or if animals are behaving a certain way around you, it means that this person's higher self is trying to communicate with you or your spirit guides are trying to communicate with you about this connection. Um, but this to the sea card, it also really, really makes me think that time alone or time apart will be an important chapter of this connection. Um, I'm not sure where you guys are at in your journey with this connection, but I do think that there would be some point where like it's best for you guys to be apart. And I should mention that this, this phase could happen before you even meet in the 3D at all. But this feeling of loneliness and this feeling of why are we being kept apart, I feel like that's gonna happen at some point point. But yeah, you could have never met this person before and be in that phase right now. 
But I like that we have the face of spirit in the sky, even though the person in the boat looks sad or disappointment, disappointed and doesn't understand why they're going in this direction. This face in the sky is making me think like it's all okay. This is how it was supposed to happen. And the number seven as well, it makes me think of like a very spiritual number of divine orchestration. Recently, it's been making me think of alignment and perfection is another one that this number makes me think of. So if this is happening right now, I, f I do feel like your spiritual team is saying that everything is happening in divine order. This is what's best for your well-being. Um, I love that we have butterflies in this card, which are a symbol of transformation. Stars, which are a symbol of hope for the future. Um, full moons, which are a symbol of things being revealed and a very, very strong emotions. And then we have pride here. I do think that Honestly, what I think this card is here for is your spiritual team saying that they are so proud of you. I feel like throughout this journey, you guys don't give yourselves enough credit. You might feel like you're having a really hard time and you're struggling. Um, and maybe sometimes you feel like you're not doing the right things. But I think that your spiritual team is saying that like you've done everything right and you've done the best that you can do. And there's no need to regret there's no need to regret anything and there's no need to worry about the future either because this spirit is always watching over you and everything is turning out and is going to turn out exactly how it is meant to i will say with i mean this is only the second group but i was going to say with this group in particular i do kind of feel a strong element of like destiny divine orchestration and things like that so this is what i see for the energy check so i'm going to take my water break and then we're going to move into your tarot the tarot that you guys chose so in this part of the reading we're going to be answering the how how you two will come together so we're going to take a look at your journey i'm going to do this in a similar style that i did um whenever i did this video last like several months ago i was cat sitting tina so Man, it's probably longer ago than I realized. Um, but we're going to have you on this side and your person, Tina's my sister's cat, by the way, and your person on that side. And so we'll pull cards to show what steps you're going through, what your journey looks like. You're moving this way, they're moving that way. And then we'll have a card in the middle that represents your union. Um, as we go through the journeys, you might find yourself at any stage. So you might see like, oh, I'm, I'm in the beginning stages here, or I really resonate with this energy. So that means I'm very close to union. So um, it's not necessarily like this is now and then we're going into the future. You could currently find yourself at any point in the journey, if that makes sense. And then you can see like, depending on where you find yourself, how close you are to union. Okay, group number two, our spirit quartz, our moon child, not moon child, star child. <laughs> there is a moon child deck, but this is the star child one. Um, I'm also thinking of, I do have a crystal oracle deck where spirit quartz is associated with music. So music could be an important part of this connection. Like you bond over music, like the same music, met at a concert, you or them are a musician, their higher self speaks to you through music, you have a song with this person, like this is our song, or something like that. Okay, so let's start off with your side. So group number two, what card can you show for their initial energy? We have the six of crystals, so that would be um, the Six of Pentacles. Then we have the Empress. Then we have the Knight of Cups. So then let's move over to your person side. We have the Page of Wands. Oh, interesting. Then the Three of Crystals. That's the Three of Pentacles. 
then the seven of wands and then we are going to pull a card for your union energy and we have the eight of cups so i don't know if you could see like the deck in the frame when i was shuffling it i kind of tried to hold it back because if it falls out on the other cards it can just make a mess um but i noticed that at the beginning when i initially started shuffling the cards were kind of taking a while to come out but it felt like as i moved along things were getting faster and faster so one sign that you're close to union with this person it could be that you kind of feel like your life is accelerating you feel like things are gaining momentum maybe things aren't taking as much time for you to manifest or many things in your life that you've been waiting on are kind of all falling into place at once so like let's say you're waiting to hear back from a job and then you're also planning a move and you're planning this and that um, these are all things that take time and that you could be waiting on but then when they start to get faster and faster and like they're all happening at the same time that could be a sign that you are that you're close to union with this person so i want to just talk about like with group one, I started all on this side and then all on that side. I think with this group, I might be bouncing back and forth. We'll see. But I just wanted to point out the contrast between these two energies because I thought it was quite, um, I thought it was quite interesting. So the six of crystals for me, you guys might know the six of pentacles. I think of it as like a second two of cups. Um, Oh, okay. I think of it as like a second two of cups because the two people in the card, at least in the Rider weight, look very similar to the two people in the two of cups. And then there's like a third being who's above them and it looks like the being is bringing them together. So I feel like the beginning of your journey, it starts, it's very conscious for you guys. I feel like from the start, you guys were very conscious about like wanting to manifest your soulmate wanting to be in that kind of committed relationship i'm noticing that the two people that the two people on this card look exactly the same so it's like you're trying to find your person or your other half so to speak or like your twin flame your soulmate you guys really wanted to find the one and the six of pentacles also talks about well for me it's like or maybe it's just the meaning of the card, a very healthy and reciprocated and fair energy exchange. There's also a meaning of generosity in this card. So I think that you guys are really givers. I think that you love with all your heart and, you know, being able to love someone and be love. It's, I feel like you guys are kind of a romantic, like what I really want in life is connection. I want to give my heart to someone. I want to nurture someone. I want to plant seeds with them and watch our future grow together. Um, but it's kind of interesting that we don't have the third being in this card. Like I said, usually there's a third being who I would often think of as like a spirit guide who's bringing these two people together. Um, so what I'm kind of feeling is that at the beginning of your journey, you guys might have been in an energy where, and I feel, I am feeling a little bit of uh, sadness coming in. Maybe that's your sadness or your, your spiritual team just feeling sad for you. Um, it's like you were manifesting people, but they weren't necessarily your match, your person, the person who was right for you. And it's sad because it was like, you wanted nothing more than to be in that reciprocated, happy, committed relationship. But it's like, maybe you continue to uh, meet people who weren't emotionally available or it was hard to meet anybody at all. Um, but there's that feeling of, it's like wondering where your divine guidance is or like wondering why no one's answering. I really feel for you guys because it is like a sad energy that is coming through here when like all you wanted in your heart was to find this love but again I feel like it's a very conscious decision for you guys like when you were activated by this or yeah that makes sense <laughs> this first card in the journey represents when you're activated by your person's energy in the 5d sense so I feel like when you were activated by their energy this was probably when you started having 
those thoughts of like, I want to find my person. I want to find my soulmate. And I'll tell you guys, like if you were one of those people who, um, like from a very young age, you knew that you wanted to find love. Like you were always a romantic, like from when you were little, you were like, I want to get married and I want to have a family or whatever it is. Um, I feel like that means this person's higher self activated you from from such an early age or even was always with you. But it's interesting because over on their side, we have the page of wands, which I feel like is a very different energy. And I dare say it's almost the opposite energy. I, If I'm being kind of frank, page of wands can give me kind of fuck person energy. And I'm saying that as a kind of <laughs> former fuck person, so no judgment, but it's like, you know what? I'm not even going to use that because it's derogatory. I don't like that. But someone who is just um, more into the non-committal part of relationships, I guess it really depends how you go about it, if it should be frowned upon or not. If you're leading people on to think that you want something more, but you really don't, then then we frown upon you. But if you're open from the get-go, I don't want something serious. I just want to have fun. I just want to have a casual relationship. Then that's amazing. And that's what you should do. But I, I definitely think that um, your person started off as more like, ah, this eight of cups makes sense now. Um, they definitely started off more in that energy. You know, the page of wands is the youngest of the court cards and the least evolved. And I'm not saying that like liking casual relationships is like unevolved or immature or something like that. But when we deal with page energy, there can be a feeling of like, I'm not ready for something yet. So it could just be that this person was not ready for that level of commitment in a relationship or just wanted to have fun because Juan's energy is very fun and passionate and exciting. Um, Maybe they felt like I'm too young to settle down. I want to explore the world. You know, it doesn't ha necessarily have to be about like casual relationships. But in any case, there's that feeling of I just want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy my freedom. I want to enjoy my youth. I'm not really in this six of pentacles energy yet. Um, and if you knew each other at this time or were involved in each other, involved, involved with each other at this time, I can see how there could be some disharmony there. And I'm also looking at the white wolf and, you know, I'm thinking of the phrase like a lone wolf and white animals make me think of freedom, like white horse, white anything. So yeah, I think this person really did value their freedom. And I also think it's very telling that this page of wands is sitting down because, you know, in this reading, we're supposed to be walking towards the middle here and... This person is like, nah, I'm not moving. So they started off like not moving towards this union and you started off looking away because maybe you were looking for this love, but you were looking in the wrong places. You were finding people that weren't um, a good match for you and things like that. Um, and maybe when you, if you met this person when they were in this kind of energy, that could have been something that scared you, you know, like I don't want a repeat of my past um, of my past heartbreaks and and things like that so moving into the next energy I think it's very interesting that you guys both have uh, threes in this area because even though it might look on the outside like you guys are on different wavelengths and you're on different journeys the face in the sky would beg to differ it's almost like you're both doing exactly what you're meant to be doing right now and and sometimes you can't see that when you're in the moment and sometimes we mistake like discomfort as like something's wrong but you're actually growing through the discomfort and i feel like throughout this whole journey you guys are both like doing exactly what you were meant to do um it's interesting that on this person's side there's like dog cat cat and we had the paw print here like I don't know if this person has a pet that you really, really like, or you're gonna get a pet together. Um, or like maybe if you're in separation with this person, it's like you miss them, but you also really, really miss their companion animal um, and like hanging out with them too. But yeah, like pets are significant here. 
Um, but yes, I love that we have the Empress here after this energy because this means that when you're going through these struggles or when you went through this struggle, if this is a past tense thing, it's like you took responsibility or you took accountability for yourself and for your own well-being like we saw with this oracle card um an idea that's been kind of following me recently is like blame and responsibility are not the same thing and i really really liked that because i always found it hard to talk about these issues where it's like if i keep running into situations that I don't like is it my fault because like I manifested it is it my fault because I was a match to it and no it's not that it's your fault like we are not blaming you but at the same time it's like your responsibility to heal like we saw here and to balance your emotions and to get right with your inner compass and I feel like you guys really took that upon yourselves and said like I'm gonna, I feel like all this Empress energy was directed to you because the Empress is nurturing, kind, caring, compassionate, um, motherly, protective, so unconditionally loving. And I feel like this was an energy that you guys so freely gave to others and frankly, people who didn't deserve it, no offense to them. And now you're, this is the point where you're like, no, I'm gonna take all of this energy and pour it right back into myself. I'm going to show myself compassion. I'm going to show myself love. I'm going to show myself nurturing. I, I feel like I said motherly there. So some of you guys might have needed to like parent yourself in this process and be there for yourself, maybe in a way that parents or adult figures weren't. You could have been healing something from your childhood, but as you become this person who fills your own cup, this person who unconditionally loves yourself, this was how you would become a match to someone who unconditionally loves you. I almost feel like this is more of your union card. This card is more representing your union than this one, um, which is very interesting because that means that this person's journey is a little bit longer than yours. Um, that could be indicating that it, it takes them a bit more time to come towards you. Um, or this could be spirit's way of saying like, it's their turn to take action, if that makes sense. Like you've already come so far, now it's their turn to, you know, travel the distance. Um, but I feel like once you embarked on this self-love journey, you healed from within, you became a match to unconditional love. And I think the Knight of Cups, does indicate this person coming towards you and making a romantic offer to you. Yeah, I think there's more cards on this side because Spirit's saying like they're the one who needs to move now. Um, and Knight of Cups also means someone is coming towards you. So I think that's how you're going to come together. Ultimately, it will be their move. And I think it should be their move because, well, everyone's journey is different, but I feel like it's important for their journey that that they make that move and that they feel like it's their idea especially like I feel like this person could be learning that commitment and freedom can coexist it's not one or the other and I think they're realizing that they kind of had it wrong you know like if I'm in a relationship and committed to someone it means I'm I'm tied down it means I can't be myself it means I can't do what I want to do maybe that's something from their childhood as well like maybe this person had parents or adults in their life who really didn't let them express themselves or be free in any way or be an individual. They had to always answer to them. So this person learned like, oh, that's what relationships are. It's being oppressed. It's being tied down. It's stifling yourself. Um, I feel like that's where this person's fear of commitment might have come from. But they're realizing like, I can be free. I can be me. I can do whatever I want. And I can also be happily in love with someone and committed to someone. It's just a matter of being committed to the right person who respects me and who, who gives me that freedom to, to grow and to be authentic to myself. Um, and I think that they're also realizing, I feel like for a lot of people, they were in these kind of like casual relationships and they equated that to freedom. But they're realizing like, that doesn't make me feel free. It just kind of makes me feel lonely if I'm being truthful. So I think they're going through these kinds of, I think they're going through these kinds of realizations. I think that 
this seven of wands here represents them like finding the courage to face their feelings because we spoke earlier that the full moon is like your intense emotions it's things being revealed so i feel like right before this person come towards you they'll be going through that huge like that huge revelation i almost feel like you guys might have been the person who was feeling things very very intensely and now you're coming to a more balanced place and this person was just stifling everything and and both of those are not healthy and i feel like you're coming to oh my gosh <laughs> i just felt called to like flip over the deck and we have the queen of cups so you're mastering your emotions exactly it's like one of you was too like this and the other one was too nothing <laughs> and now you're coming to a place where you can flow freely and yeah really be healed and really master your emotions um but yeah this is like them looking it's time to go into battle it's time to face it's time to face our emotions that are that are calling us. Um, and then the Eight of Cups is this feeling of like, I'm walking away. I want something more meaningful. Like, this is not doing it for me anymore. And I love the Eight of Cups in this deck because usually we see the person walking away from cups, whereas here the cups are like a trail for this person to follow so they know where to go. And cups, I feel like crying right now. Cups are emotions, cups are your heart. So all this person needs to do is follow their heart and it will lead them to you. And this knight of cups will come towards you. It's, oh my gosh, it's so sweet. That's how you guys are gonna come into union. It's this person making um, an offer. And I just realized I didn't talk about the three of pentacles yet. It could be that this person was very, is very career oriented or was very focused on their career. Um, maybe that was another thing that kind of held them back. They felt like, oh, I can't be in a committed relationship right now because I'm too busy. And I feel like that was kind of a, a cop out, you know, because you can be busy and work very hard and you can still be in a committed relationship but you know when it's scary to face your feelings when it's scary to face your emotions it's very convenient to kind of slap excuses like that if that uh if that makes sense i feel like that's what this is referring to but um wow so yeah this is your journey of how you will come together so now we are going to answer the when part of this question and like I said before, we're gonna look at some different time frames and then see what could speed it up or what could slow it down. So for group number two, what would the early time frame be for them? The fast time frame. We have Sun. So this is talking about, um, it could be talking about Leo season if that's coming up at the time that you're watching this reading. Um, it could also be when the sun is in your sign. So like, for example, if you're a Taurus, then when the sun is in Taurus, you know? Like around your birthday month or this person's birthday month. Um, I should also mention that with the Empress here, we have Taurus and Libra energy. And we had a lot of water energy earlier. And then what is the slow or long time frame for group number two and we have a grand trine so wait let me do some math this is eight months i think i'm just trying to think of signs that trine each other are four months away from each other you know like aries leo sagittarius all trine each other and they're all four months apart so like four four you know so I think this is saying eight months as the long time frame, and for the short one, Leo season or your birthday month, whatever is like coming up soon. So now, and also that was very specific because I feel like group ones was a little bit meshy, <laughs> but that was very, thank you group two, that was very easy to understand. And I feel like this reading was quite um, easy to understand as well. Yeah, you're, you're doing exactly what you need to be doing. You're exactly where you need to be. Um, I also just feel kind of called to point out 
Um, don't do this if you didn't already want to or weren't already planning to, but I just noticed that there's little mushrooms on this card and this person's having like an awakening experience where they realize how much they freaking love themselves. So like it could be a, some kind of psychedelic experience or like a meditative experience, but I feel like you're having this moment of transcending and realizing how much you love yourself and I think it's very, very emotional. Okay, so for group number two, under what circumstances would this union happen in the shorter time frame? How could group two make this happen in the shorter time frame? We have the six of wands here. Jeez, that is, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the spirit animal of a crocodile. And then what could make this slower? We have the Eight of Cups. Oh, interesting. I feel like this is saying if you ignore your feelings. Because here, this Eight of Cups, we're following the cups. In this Eight of Cups, we're walking away from them. So if you ignored your feelings, if you moved on from this connection, things could happen slower. Um, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't move on, but they're just telling it like it is. So. Okay, let's look at the, and I really hope that crocodile is in here. There must be, it's a pretty common animal. Maybe alligator. That's the worst when I <laughs> look in this book and then the animal's not there. Oh, thank goodness, okay. <laughs> Take your time to digest what you're now learning rather than rushing it. Oh. You know what? Okay, I almost feel like the universe is favoring the slower union. So maybe this is not about ignoring your feelings, but it's more, or not ignoring them, but saying like, we're not gonna act on these intense emotions. That's more what it is. Um, these cups are full, which is also kind of like characteristic of this deck in particular. Usually we're walking away because they're empty but okay it's coming together now sorry and judging from the earlier messages of like you know there will be a point where being apart is actually best even if you're feeling things very very intensely that could be why we see a person walking away from the cups even though they're full even though i my feelings are full for you right now and i feel very strongly for you right now i feel like i need to walk away um i also think it's very interesting that I said eight months for this and then we have an eight. So that could really be um, a significant time frame for you guys. It might be the one, like I said, that spirit is favoring a little bit more. Um, I also think it's very interesting that we have Saturn in Pisces here because um, I don't know exactly when Saturn is entering Pisces, but at the time that I am filming this reading, I know that it's gonna be pretty soon because I have Saturn in Pisces and my Saturn return is coming soon. So. Um, yeah, but that's so cool how it's eight and eight. So maybe this one is actually better for things to be more stable, for things to be healthier, for things to last longer. Um, you know, this shorter union is also possible, but now that I'm looking at the image of this card and there was the message in this spirit animal book of like, take your time to digest what you're now learning. So take the time to process your lessons rather than rushing ahead. Um, and look, this guy's pulling the, the alligator back, like, whoa, hold your horses. So maybe you are being advised to like pump the brakes a little bit right now. You need to be very protective of your personal territory and assertive about setting boundaries. This is a time for renewal and new beginnings as you emerge from a dark period of your life. Be sure to gather all the facts and look at the situation from all sides before passing judgment, making any decisions or taking action. It's important to honor your ancestors in any way you choose. Yeah, so hold off before taking action. Make sure that you process everything. Um, make sure that you know everything you need to know. This face that's looking over you, it could be your ancestors who are helping you. Um, which again, it's so, it's interesting at the beginning of this reading that I was focusing so much on like 
last names and stuff like that that could have been because you know your ancestors who come from your lineage were wanting to come through and share a message with you but group two this is all i'm seeing for your reading so i'm gonna end it here thank you very very much for letting me do this reading for you i hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and i wish you all the best please take good care of yourself stay healthy don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you feel like doing that i also have a patreon so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic that will be linked down below too and i have a music channel the song that you guys heard at the start of this video was oh i just got like a burst of happiness and then and then I looked up and saw 4141, which 41 is a number that I associate with home, the concept of home. So maybe that's your ancestors like hugging you and saying, welcome home. I just got hit with this, like a really sudden burst of joy. That was, oh, that was so nice. <laughs> um, but what was I saying? Sorry, I was a little bit slow in realizing this. Um, I got that burst of happiness and message from your ancestors when I was talking about my music channel and then I remembered that spirit quartz is related to music so your ancestors or passed on loved ones might also speak to you through music and this could be your human family members or it could be um, animal members of your family sorry I just wanted to add that because I feel like it's important um, anyway uh, I already said the intro, but I feel like it's weird to cut back to it now. So I'll just do it again in, in this clip. <laughs> um, sending lots of love to you, your person, your spiritual team, of course, your ancestors, your family, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye! Hi, number threes. So if you guys chose the titanium rainbow quartz, I think it's called this beautiful shiny guy and the apparition tarot, this is going to be a reading all about how and when you will come together with your person. So right away, I want to say for this group, I'm getting very cozy vibes like picture a couch with a bunch of pillows and blankets and the fireplace crackling and it's raining outside and maybe you're drinking some warm tea <laughs> this is the vibe that i get from this group like cozy wholesome vibes i don't know if this is a, a setting that you guys like to be in or if this is more metaphorical for how this connection makes you feel but it feels like very warm and cozy i'm also getting messages about like humidity lots of precipitation so maybe you or this person lives in an area that gets a lot of rain or has a particularly long or intense rainy season i'm more so picturing a cold area like i'm thinking of england weather i think england has that kind of weather but it could definitely be a more tropical like hot and humid place as well but those were a couple like energies that were coming to my mind from the get-go so this reading is going to be pretty thorough just to break it down very quickly we will start with the energy check to make sure this is your group then we will answer the how part of the question and then the when part of the question and when we do the when part not only are we going to look at specific time frames for your union but we're also going to see what could make this happen faster and what could make this happen slower so the free will of you and your person kind of uh, comes into play here what are the actions that you could take or what are the actions that your person could take to um, speed things up or slow things down so yeah that's basically how it's gonna go i'm just gonna move this deck to the side for a second because for the energy check we're just gonna be using oracle cards so let's take a look at what we have we're starting off with self-expression, vocalization, individuality, inner voice, and assertiveness. Rebirth. There is only light. Eagle. Vision, freedom, authority, inspiration. Treasure Island. Then we have financial health. Yeah, I, I figured these weren't going to fit. <laughs> and an anemone. I thought that was a sea plant with self-reliance. Maybe anemones like the original flower and then the one in the sea is the sea anemone. Um, 
that's a hard word to say. Um, anyways, so right away, I'm noticing that quite a bit of these numbers could be your ages. I don't think we have any nine-year-olds watching, but uh, you could be 20, you could be 30, you could be 32. I think there are some younger people who watch my videos, so 16 could be a significant age as well, but definitely 20, 30, and 32 could be significant ages, or this could be like the age that you met this person. Also with rebirth and eagle, these are both uh, symbols that make me think of Scorpio. So somebody, you or this person could be a Scorpio, or maybe you met in Scorpio season. Um, the birds are making me think of social media. This could be somebody that you met online or you follow each other on social media. Um, and this card, the Treasure Island card, often makes me think of long distance. So um, you could be, you know, at a physical distance from this person right now, or you were at one point in your connection with them, or you come from two countries or two cities that are very far away from each other. I do have to say, sitting with the energy of this group, this is like the first group so far where I'm feeling a bit less of a romantic vibe. Now that's not to say that, you know, this isn't a romantic connection for anybody or it can't move in that direction, but maybe it's just that like more people happen to choose this group who are not thinking about a romantic connection. Um, Cause nothing here is like overtly jumping out as romantic for me. But what I can see for sure is that this is someone who has really, really inspired you. I think this is someone that you really look up to. Um, I remember reading somewhere sometime that eagles are the bird that can fly the highest. I have not fact checked this. I probably should, but I feel like it's something that I, that I refer to in readings a lot. So you might feel like this person is just like soaring. You know, if an eagle's flying high, you're looking up to them. Uh, this could be somebody who is quite independent and who lives a very free life, and that might be something that really attracts you to them. Like, wow, they're really seizing their life and seizing their opportunities. They're really, what is it, grabbing life by the horns, and that, and that makes you want to do it too. Um, the United States could be significant as well. Eagles make me think of the States, so you could have met in the States, or you, or them, or both of you are from there. Um, but let's just go through these in order because I feel like I feel like I'm kind of jumping around here with this card. This is a chakra oracle deck, so this will be associated with the throat chakra. Oh my gosh, I was gonna say, it's really cool that we have a throat chakra card and then we have the number 32, which reduces to five because the throat chakra is the fifth chakra. And just when I was thinking that, I looked up at the camera and saw 555. So like fifth chakra, lots of repeating fives. Um, five is a number of change and growth and development i feel like this is someone who really inspires you to change your life and inspires you to be the best version of yourself that you can be this might be someone who inspires you to like find your own individuality and stand up for yourself and use your voice um, when i say that you look up to this person it's not necessarily like you want to live a life exactly like them, although there may be a lot of things about their personality and the life that they're living that do inspire you. Um, but because of this individuality and self-expression, it's just more about like the heart and soul that they put into what they do and the freedom that they allow themselves to live their life how they want to, where you're like, I want to live my own version of that, you know? I want to live my best life as well. And I think that this person is a really, really positive influence on you with There Is Only Light. My first thought when I looked at this card was that your spiritual team is really, really happy that, you know, you found this person, um, that you two crossed, crossed paths. They're really, really happy to see that. Um, with the throat chakra energy here as well, um, it could be that you have a lot to say to each other. If you don't know this person yet in the 3D, then you might communicate with each other a lot in the higher dimensions. So um, you could have clairaudience actually and hear this other person's higher self speaking to you, or you could have a lot of dreams where they are, um, where they're speaking to you as well. Or you could be pursuing something that has to do with using your voice. So like a singer, a, a speaker, a teacher, 
I mean, there's a lot of things that focus on using your voice, but speaking up, expressing yourself and sharing your ideas. That could be something that you're interested in pursuing or that this person does, um, that this person does for a living. Um, with rebirth here, I feel like this person might have come into your life at a time where you were feeling kind of low, honestly, like kind of uninspired, unmotivated, and they sort of came in and, and shook things up and restored a hope for you. Um, and with Treasure Island, a lot of the time with this card, I think of the expression, good things come to those who wait. So you might have had this feeling or you will have this feeling if you haven't met them in the 3D yet of like, where have you been all my life? <laughs> like, I've really been waiting for to meet a friend like you or a romantic partner like you or a business partner like you or um, or whatever it is. And sea turtles make me think of longevity as well. So I do think that this is a connection that you can really nurture and it will be in your life for a very, very long time. I could even say forever, but that's kind of a dramatic thing to say for a whole group of thousands of people. So <laughs> um, there's definitely a potential for this to be um, a very long-term connection. And I feel like, you know, the more time you take and the slow and steadier you go, the stronger foundation you will build. And, and this can become something really, really beautiful. And I feel like the imagery of the tree kind of mirrors that as well. Um, I really like the symbolism of trees in any reading, but it's also very nice for a connection because it means you're grounded, you have solid roots, you have a solid foundation of trust and knowing each other well, but then also your branches can grow and extend up to the sky. So you keep each other grounded, but you simultaneously also like lift each other up. I feel like you hype each other up and encourage each other and praise each other, but you also know when to you know give tough love or constructive criticism or call each other out i feel like you just keep it real with each other like you're very honest the throat chakra could be talking about that as well like honesty truth uh clear and direct communication um i feel like you have this kind of no bullshit <laughs> no bullshit communication with each other um you know, assertiveness can talk about healthy boundaries too. So you have no problem like calling each other out, like I said, or saying no when you want to say no. And then you know that when you do give each other praise, you really mean it. And when you say yes, you really mean it. And it's not because you feel forced to. I think this is a connection where you really give each other that freedom to speak up and there's no judgment. And if there's ever a disagreement, or like something you did rub them the wrong way or vice versa. I feel like it's never taken personally, you know? You're like, that's just who I am and that's just who you are and that's okay. And I feel like any differences between you don't necessarily need to cause friction because at the end of the day, like it's all love, you know? We know that we love each other and we know that we care about each other and we get where each other's coming from. So it's like, it's no stress. <laughs> it's like this kind of thing. I feel like this is just a really, really lovely connection. Um, I do feel like you guys will, you'll either both be wealthy in your own respective endeavors or you are wealthy in your respective endeavors or this is something that you could create together. Um, and with self-reliance next to this, maybe this is you guys like, uh, making your own money, being your own boss kind of vibe. So you could be self-employed, um, especially with self-expression here. You could be self-employed or trying to move towards that, or this person could be self-employed or trying to move towards that. Um, I really like how there's two flowers in this card as well. Like you guys are growing together and, and blossoming together. So, wow. This is wonderful energy. <laughs> this looks amazing. I'm also seeing the visual of a fountain. I'm not really sure what that represents. Um, maybe you're gonna like meet this person by a fountain or something, <laughs> or there's like a fountain of youth, or um, there could be like a famous fountain in the city where you live. You know, like the one in, is it in Rome? <laughs> oh my gosh, I probably sound so ignorant right now. Um, but anyway, so this concludes the uh, energy check section of the reading. So we're going to move into the tarot. And this is the part of the reading where I pause and drink some water. Okay. So now we're going to answer the how part of this question. How will you come together with this person? Okay. 
I'm also thinking of like Fontana because I thought of a fountain, Fontana. I feel like that's a name, right? Like a last name or something? Or does it mean fountain or both? Okay, so I'm gonna do this part of the reading the same way I did it the last time I covered this topic. We will have you on this side and your person on this side. And then we're gonna pull cards to see your journey, the series of events that you're going through and vice versa. And then the card in the middle will represent the energy of your union. And as we're pulling the cards here, you may feel like you resonate with like different parts of the journey. You might feel like I'm here, I'm over here, I'm over here. Um, but the idea is like, if you resonate with a card that is closer to the middle, you feel like, oh yeah, that's the point that I'm at in this journey, then that would mean you are closer to union, if that makes sense. All right, group number three. So we're gonna start with you, with the journey on your end. What does group three's journey start with? So first we have the Knight of Cups. Then we have, okay, we have the Seven of Swords and the Moon, which are coming out together. So I'm gonna leave them together and they'll be like uh, one energy. This deck feels hesitant. Then we have, that makes a lot of sense, the Seven of Cups. So now we'll move over to your person's side. We're starting off with the Six of Swords. Woo, geez. <laughs> it's funny, cause this, when this happens, that's another sign that there's a lot this person wants to say to you, or there's a lot you wanna say to each other. And that was like a vibe that I was picking up uh, at the start of the reading. When cards explode like that, it's like they're thinking about you a lot or they wanna say a lot to you or there's like a feeling of anticipation. Um, Eight of Swords. Oh, interesting. Then we have the Knight of Pentacles and then now for the moment of truth, <laughs> we're gonna pull the middle card, which will be the energy representing your union. And it's the six of wands. Oh my gosh, I love that. And that, that makes a lot of sense, like considering your, uh, considering your energy. So um, I'm gonna start over here on your end. We'll talk about your journey. Then we will talk about their journey. And then we'll talk about this, um, this beautiful union card. I also wanna, Mention that we do have the three of wands at the bottom and I like both of these for you. So I'm going to put it like this so that you can see like, uh, <laughs> like that six of wands and three of wands. So over here on your end, first of all, straight up, you guys are very spiritually and psychically gifted. I think that you will likely resonate with uh, being a healer or being a light worker or wanting to do something in the world that really moves people emotionally, that helps people to heal and that helps people to feel like they can live their best life. Much like this person I think has done for you. It's like you want to you wanna find your happiness and then you wanna pay it forward by helping others find happiness. And I think that you guys really, when it comes to your profession, when it comes to what you do in the world, like your heart has to be in it and you have to feel like you're touching people's lives emotionally. Like you don't wanna do something just to make money, just to put a roof over your head, just to make your family happy um, or you know, do trivial things for other people. I think you wanna make a big difference in other people's lives. I think that you guys are likely highly empathic. So like when the world is hurting, you're hurting and you wanna help raise the vibration of the earth and you wanna see an earth where we can all coexist um, despite our differences or that we can all like, what is it called? Uh, thrive together or um, 
I don't know what the right word is, but that we can all thrive together because of our differences, where we realize that our differences make us stronger and we stop fighting and discriminating and hating each other over these things that do not matter, things that are actually our strength. We're, we're turning on each other for them. Um, I think you might be someone who's extra like sensitive and extra sentimental about these kinds of topics, like really wanting to see the whole world be happy. At times people might have laughed at you for this, like why like why are you so sensitive about that? Why is it such a big deal? Or like why do you feel so much for this person or these group of people? You don't know them, you're not part of that group anyway. I feel like you have such a heightened level of compassion and empathy that a lot of people just don't understand, which Honestly, sometimes I feel like you guys might wish that you weren't so compassionate or you might wish that you weren't an empath because I think it's almost easier to go through life without feeling things so deeply. And I just want to tell you guys, if you haven't realized this yet, because again, this, this energy could be your past, right? We don't know. Well, you'll know where you're at in this journey, but I don't know. This could be your past, but I want to say if you're still in that energy of wishing that you weren't like that, one day you'll see that your sensitivity is your greatest gift and that, you know, you were blessed with this from spirit so that you could change the world and actually so that you you could create a world that is more sensitive and that is more um, that's more in touch with their emotions. And I feel like I feel some frazzled energy here and some confused energy with the horse like running in all different directions. I feel like you guys have known like you know that you want to help people and you know that you want to utilize your gifts but when it comes to like a practical uh avenue through which to do that you know like a specific profession a specific project that would be the best vehicle for you um to use your gift to help others i feel like um at the beginning of this journey you guys are or you guys were a little bit um confused about that so this running in different dif directions it could have been like you tried out different jobs you tried out different projects and nothing was really sticking or it could be something that was more going on in your head like should I do this should I do that should I do that and you got sort of like analysis paralysis and couldn't make a decision um and I think that was leading you to feel frustrated but I also think it was leading you to feel like what if this is all in my head what if I don't have this calling what if i don't have these gifts what if there isn't like a, a purpose for me um or like a, a specific profession that i'm supposed to do or what if i'm just not made for it what if i don't have what it takes because the moon is all about like oh it's so interesting i didn't even notice this but it's so interesting that there's a bunch of doors on the moon because like these are all different routes that you could go these are all different things that you could try out and it's like you don't know which door to go through maybe there's like yeah and it makes a lot of sense that you have the seven of cups too because that's exactly the same thing it's like you have so many options that you're just overwhelmed by it the seven of cups is also a card that uh, recently makes me think of the crown chakra of someone who's highly psychic which i think totally matches with your energy someone who's very very um tapped in and just the fact that we have this uh spiral around the third eye strengthens that even more for me um the visual of this is really telling i think because it's like the person is drowning in their emotions drowning in their sensitivity and and it has yet to find the right outlet for it or has yet to figure out how they can, um, what is the word, exalt it into like the most healthiest expression of it in a way that's going to help others. I feel like at some point in your journey or in this energy of like confusion, confusion, frustration, being overwhelmed, I don't know which way to go. I don't know. I don't know which path to choose. Um, the moon can talk about fears that you're not good enough, fears that it's not going to work out. But the seven of swords talks about deception. And so I feel like this is coming through from your spiritual team so that you know if you have a voice in your head that is telling you this stuff, it is bullshit. Like if you have a voice in your head that's telling you you're not good enough or that you don't have a calling, that you're not going to make a difference, that your sensitivity is a weakness, that your sensitivity is a curse, it's it could not be farther from the truth. You're going to find your calling, you're going to find something that you're really passionate about and it is going to help so many people you're going to help people 
open their eyes to the deep emotions that lie within them. You're going to move people. You're going to move people to healing and becoming a better version of themselves. And that is going to heal the world as it ripples out. And I'm not saying it's your job to heal the whole world, but just know that the efforts you put in, it will create a ripple effect and it will activate more people. Um, now, it's interesting too with the Seven of Swords that we have this like chessboard, which is making me think of like a strategy and a plan. Maybe one thing that is paralyzing you guys um, is this feeling of like, I need to decide what my life purpose is first and then I need to take action. Whereas maybe for you guys, it's more like through trial and error and through just going with the flow and through just living your life, you'll end up in the right place. I'm hearing like, you're not finding your purpose. Your purpose is finding you. And it, it won't you it won't find you when you're like consciously trying to find it, if that makes sense. If you as you just live your life and as you just go with the flow and try different things and follow your heart, like it will find you when you don't even realize it. And then one day you'll wake up and be like, man, am I living my dream life? Am I living my purpose? So I think that in order not to drown here and in order not to get paralysis, it's like, don't think so much about the plan. And, and even don't think so much about the label of like my purpose, my one passion, my one calling. Um, and think of your life as just a journey. I know that you know, I used to feel like this. I would feel quite envious of people who had like one thing that they were really, really, really passionate about because I was always more somebody who was interested in a million different things. And then it felt like I was never really dedicated to any of them. So I never really became super, super good at any of them. And so when I heard of someone who like, I don't know, let's say they're really, really freaking passionate about like like uh, music production, for example. <laughs> it's like, you know, someone who has it in them to spend, like, I knew this was what I wanted to do. And ever since I was like six months old, I spent 29 hours a day working on music production. And it's like their whole life. I used to really envy those kinds of people. Cause I was like, imagine how nice it would be to be so certain about something and to have that dedication and that focus to pour everything into one like into one uh, venture and be able to say like, I'm a freaking expert at this, you know, to be able to master something like that. Um, and I still kind of feel that way sometimes, but I'm trying to learn that like, there's a beauty in being like having multiple, trying multiple things and roaming freely. And, and maybe you guys resonate with that as well. But I think putting that pressure to find that one thing, to find that one purpose that might actually um that might actually hinder you on this journey and it's interesting that this is the last energy of yours that we leave that we leave off with before we come to the union because this means that you could very well still be in that energy when you come into union with this person um which i guess on one hand that might feel discouraging if you're like really i'm gonna stay in this energy but i also think it's nice because very often in readings um you know even in some readings i've done recently i see it more like oh, okay you're gonna get your stuff together while you're still apart you're gonna figure your life out while you're still apart and then you come together once you have it all together and and i think this reading is really saying it's okay to be a work in progress it's okay to have no clue what you're doing with your life um it's okay to feel lost and you can still have this like beautiful this beautiful loving union i kind of feel I, i'm getting that sneaking feeling for this group like the first union that you have might not be in person because I was getting that vibe of like social media, long distance situation. You might be stuck in this rut and this person comes and activates you. Like you see one of their posts or you get to know of them or I don't know, you see them from afar. Um, of course, take that how it resonates, but I just kind of had that. Um, I kind of had that feeling. So moving on here. Let's go over to your person side now. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting, the contrast between these two images, because here it looks like we have someone, they have all of their blessings, all of their stuff in this protective ring. And we have the squiggly swords that are 
you know, outside. And then in this one, it looks like the squiggly swords have infiltrated. So it's like, maybe this person felt like they had their whole life together. They felt like they had everything going for them. Oh, you know what? That's so interesting. I feel like this might actually be a person that you've envied, like for all of the reasons that that we spoke about before or like because there was that feeling of you aspire to be like them or they inspire you in some way we've spoken about what might make you feel lost or insecure this might be someone that you look at and you're like wow this person has it all together they you know they carry themselves so well they're so attractive they're so abundant like you really really look up to them and i think that they definitely come off that way and i also think that there was very much a point in their life where they did feel like that because the six of swords i'm thinking like you know good mental health clear skin you're thriving so you know at the beginning of your journey they definitely felt like man i got it all ah i understand i think that these squiggly swords are representing anxiety or like feelings of self-doubt because that's what the eight of swords is about so this could be a person who struggles with anxiety this could be a person who struggles with doubting themselves much like we've seen with like the moon on your side as well and i think what they've tried to do here is keep the anxiety out or keep the feelings of self-doubt out by becoming really successful, by accumulating material wealth, by moving to their dream destination. The Six of Swords talks about moving and relocating as well. Um, I did this when I was younger. I was like, oh, I'm anxious. I'm sad. I'm going to move to Japan. And then I moved to Japan and I was like, oh, I'm still anxious and sad, but now I'm in Japan. <laughs> so it's like, wherever you go, yeah, wherever you go, there you are. That's an expression. And I feel like that's a lesson that this person learned. So they're like, oh, I doubt myself, but if I become successful, then I'll have good self-esteem. Or if I make a lot of money, I'll have good self-esteem. Or if I just move to another country or go somewhere far away, then I can run away from my problems and be happy. And whatever they pursued here, I do think for some time, it made them very, very happy. It kept the squiggly swords out, but it was only a matter of time until they infiltrated again because these squiggly swords were inside them. It was never something that was, like the call is coming from inside the house, man. <laughs> like they realize it's something within them that needs their attention and so you might be feeling anxious on your end and you look to this person's life and think if i had a life like them then i won't be anxious anymore but i think on their end they're actually feeling quite similar as you are or as you have if this is a past energy and i think that from a spiritual perspective what this connection teaches you is that like there's no amount of material success or material things um, that will truly make you happy if you don't have your inner peace. And we need to look for happiness within ourselves and within our connections and you know the people we love and like the you have the right idea honestly and the difference we make for other people the compassion that we share with others. You guys have the right idea. It's just that you have that anxious voice in your head that gets in the way. Um, and there's no shame in that because we all have that voice, even if it looks like some people don't, um, even if it you know comes across like they've got it all figured out. We all have this. You could be like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, and you could still sometimes have this feeling like, what the heck am I doing with my life? What is going on? I think that's just part of, that's just part of being a human. So um, along this person's journey, they realized like, okay, so this is, this is coming from within. I got it. I got to work through this. And I think that this is what the Knight of Pentacles is referring to. The Knight of Pentacles is about any journey that takes time and effort. And so I think for your person, um, this is talking about a healing journey. And so I feel like when you guys meet and when you come into union, it is going to be a deeply like familiar experience because you see your struggles in each other and also deeply inspiring because you're both fighting the fight, you're both striving towards peace, you're both striving towards like 
living a peaceful and fulfilling life. And I think when you come together, you're like amazing support for each other. And I, I think maybe there's less of a romantic vibe here because the most important aspect of your connection is like the friendship like the friendship that you form and the trust and the respect that you form with each other. And of course, those things are not inherently romantic. If this is a romantic connection you're asking about, it could be that you, um, that you start off as friends. But, you know, like I said, in some readings, I see the healing journey is happening separately. In some, it's together. And I feel like for this group, um, your healing journey very much happens together. And I think you come together and it's like you shake hands and you say, we're going to keep working hard on our goals while our mental health might be chaotic, while we still struggle with self-doubt sometimes, even while we don't know what we're doing. We're not going to let that stop us and we're going to wake up every day and we're going to show up every day. Um, and I think you guys keep people accountable and I, I'm almost seeing you guys as like personalities. Maybe the social media thing was coming through because like you or this person or both of you will have some following on social media. Um, and I could see you guys being very transparent about your struggles. And I think that's what we really need. Like our generation grew up on social media. And I feel like a lot of the standards we place on ourselves and a lot of the things we want for ourselves come from like consuming social media content. And I think that, you know, we need role models like you <laughs> who say like, look, I some days I don't feel like doing this. Some days I don't want to get up and that's okay. And I can push through it and I can I can still make a good life for myself even if I am like feeling insecure, even if I have imperfections, even if I don't have like a pristine immaculate Instagram feed, even if I'm not that girl or whatever it is. Like my life doesn't have to be this like perfect aspirational fairy tale picture of happiness to be inspiring. And I think maybe we're changing the definition of what inspiring is. Maybe inspiring is when we can see people's flaws and we can see people's humanity and we still see them out there doing the thing and trying their best. Um, at least that's the influence that you have on each other and that's what you make each other feel like it's possible to do um, and that's why I really like that we have the six of wands here again this is a card that talks about it can talk about fame popularity pe having people's eyes on you so there is a feeling of you guys becoming personalities in some way or becoming renowned in some way um, I feel like you have followers but you're the type of people you are leaders with the six of wands here because that's another meaning of it but you don't lead like i lead you follow you lead like let's all go together we're in this together let's do this together and i really like this image because we talked about the rippling effect and i just noticed it's like with one candle you can light all these candles and these look like they're lined up like dominoes so it's a domino effect like this person inspired you or you inspire them and now you're going to inspire all of the people who follow you and admire you and who are cheering you on. Um, the three of wands is expansion as well. I feel like you guys are becoming well known in some way or like your name is getting out there, very successful in some way. Um, I really like that the hands are all different colors because there was that message earlier on in the reading about you guys really wanting to celebrate diversity no matter what like ethnicity, age, um, ability, uh, gender or sexual orientation you are uh, or like religious or spiritual beliefs like you want to celebrate us all coming together so I really like all of these hands clapping for you of different colors and they're all coming together um, it's just very very nice so wow even like I'm inspired by this energy I'm also noticing we have three and six so we mentioned like the ages of 30, 32, 36 might be a significant age as well. Um, but this is the how part of the reading, how you will come together with, um, with this person. I actually, I just want to take, I, I kind of feel like taking one more card if we can get like a location or uh, like an event. So we have the five of wands. Okay, so five of wands is making me think of like conflicting schedules and, and being busy. 
um i feel like you guys will meet once and then you'll really want to meet again but you're both like you're both very busy um with the number five here i also i think you're having like a 5d meeting before you have a 3d meeting there's just that vibe for this group of like the first time you meet is not in person um with the five of wands it could also be kind of a noisy environment where there's a lot of other stuff going on so it's like i'm i'm not saying you guys will meet at a club but like or maybe you will but just imagine like if you met someone at a club and you want to have a nice conversation with them but like it's really loud you can't hear what they're saying and there's like drunk people everywhere you know because the five of wands is about like conflicting interests and it, it feels like a very chaotic energy um you could also meet like in a i heard like in a subway or in a subway station or like in a bustling busy city like you could even bump into each other on the street or something like that um but I feel like it's not necessarily a private setting, like you were on a date or something like that. Um, I think you'll just like bump into each other or you're at the same event and there's a lot going on. And while you want to be alone, it's a little bit hard to be alone. And then you're trying to like coordinate to see each other, just the two of you. And like, it's really hard to find a date that works out or maybe like you're out of town and then they're out of town or something like that. Or like I said, you could also meet online. Like you could meet on social media, but I wanted to see like if there was any like physical locations we could see. So um, yeah, let's go into the when part of this reading now. So I'm going to pull, first I'm going to pull the cards for the specific time frame and then I'm going to pull the cards to see what could speed it up or slow it down. So for group number three, wow, for group number three, what is the faster time frame? We have the eighth house. So this could be referring to Scorpio season, which is interesting because uh, Scorpio, okay, there might be some sexual <laughs> attraction or tension between the two of you guys. Cause like, look, look at this. Um. Look at this artwork. <laughs> um, of course, only if that resonates, but there might be a little bit of that kind of uh, energy between the two of you. Um, what was I gonna say? So Scorpio season, which is interesting because that's the energy that came up right at the beginning of this reading. Um, you could come into union in Scorpio season. If you do know your birth chart, it could also be like when the sun enters into your eighth house so for example i'm a taurus rising and sagittarius is in my eighth house so for me this could be sagittarius season um, whichever one is coming up sooner because this is representing the earlier time frame so if you know your birth chart and the sign in the eighth house is happening before scorpio season then i would take that rather than scorpio if that makes sense and then what is the long, the long, <laughs> we have the seventh house. So interesting. So that would just be like uh, 11 months later. Did I do that right? Yes. Because if, we, if we're at the eighth, eighth house and we go around like that, then it's like almost a year. So basically the shortest time is either scorpio season or your eighth house season if you know it um within a year after that um if you don't know your birth chart scorpio season to the following libra season yes so we have a big window here now let's take i can't help but notice the snakes on this card <laughs> oh my gosh okay i'm gonna pull tarot to see more insight about what could speed this up or slow this down but this is very very interesting um the eighth house is about things that are secret or things that are like hidden and i was just saying this in another group white horses make me think of freedom or like white animals make me think of freedom and then the seventh house is like everyone other people the rest of the world that's the part of your birth chart where everyone's all up in your business and there's snakes here so i'm thinking something that could slow down or hinder this union is if you make 
too much of your connection other people's business or if you reveal too much of your connection to other people. Um, let's say this is like a, a business union. If you were going around talking about your partnership and talking about your business ideas, it could slow things down because maybe these snakes are going to copy you or they're going to, I don't know, screw you over in some way. Or if this is a romantic or a friendship, maybe like sharing too much about your relationship would make some jealous people like gossiping about you or disapproving of your relationship or starting rumors about you that could put a strain on your connection. Like someone, it feels like someone could be trying to get in the way if you divulge too much. Interesting. I'm going to take some tarot as well. And it could be with the five of wands here. It could be the very people who are around when you meet this person initially. Okay, so we have the tower, which is Mars energy, which Scorpio is also ruled by Mars. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> I, you know, there's a, um, a dick looking thing on this card and then there's a tower. So I'm thinking of Nicki Minaj, dick bigger than a tower. I ain't talking about Eiffels. Um, Paris might be significant as well. The Eiffel Tower. Maybe there's a, a famous fountain in Paris or in France because I was talking about fountains in this group. I think that was this group, um, but I don't know. Maybe someone has a, a large uh, a large tower, if you know what I mean. <laughs> there's also snakes here. So you know, <laughs> there's a lot of, oh my God, and horses. Okay, so then we have the Ten of Swords. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. And this is Gemini energy. This is sun and moon and Gemini. Yeah. Gemini is about communication, about, you know, flitting around and talking. Maybe that's why the throat chakra was so significant. Like people will talk. People are going to talk about your relationship. You know what it's like? Uh, I don't know if it's exactly like this, but you know how sometimes like stands of different celebrities like start beef between two celebrities because they're like comparing them and saying like, oh, you're my fave is better than your fave and like creating beef to the point that it actually becomes real beef between the two celebrities because like the tension escalates. Um, kind of a similar energy, but there's something about like if people are talking about you and have their opinions about you and their rumors about you, it could put strain in the relationship. Um, I think that's what this is talking about. And then um, <laughs> with the uh, tower being able to speed things up, I would say if you guys have a tower moment in your life, embracing it will speed up this union. So um, if you guys are not super familiar with tarot, a tower moment is basically like this moment in your life where your life as you know it kind of falls apart or is is changed in a very dramatic way that you weren't necessarily ready for. Um, you know, you had your plan of what your life was going to look like and all of a sudden spirit threw you a curveball and now you feel kind of on your own and scared and unsure of what the future holds. Um, you know, and eighth house also is like Plutonian energy. It's about very deep, powerful transformations. Um, so if something dramatic and radical is trying to change in your life and you're afraid of it because you don't know what the future will hold and you're desperately trying to cling on to your current life and cling on to what you know, that could also be something that slows down this union. So um, when the tower moment comes, surrender to it. When a big scary transition comes in your life or an uncertain time comes in your life, surrender to it and see where it takes you. I think that that could also um, speed up this union. But group number three, those are all the messages I have for you today. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon. So if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick-a-cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. 
And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song. So if you're interested in checking out that song, the full version of that song or any of my other songs, the music channel will be linked down below too. I'm sending lots of love to you, to your person and to your spiritual teams. Sending lots of love to the snakes too because they need love, they need healing. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Hi number fours, so if you guys chose the Bearite and the Antique Anatomy Tarot, this is going to be your reading. I love the energy of Bearite by the way. Um, all about how and when you will come together with your person. So this reading is going to be pretty thorough, but just to break it down quickly, we're going to start off with the energy check to make sure this is your group. Then we're going to answer the how part of the question and then the when part of the question. Um, and in the when part, not only are we going to see specific timeframes, but we're also going to see what could potentially speed up the process or slow down the process. So the free will of you and your person does come into play and we'll see, um, what actions you could take or what actions they might take that could um, affect this timeline. So um, let's move these to the side for a second because we're going to start off with the energy check and I'm going to be using these oracle cards. So for group number four, we're starting off with grounding, nature, presence, practicality, stability, change, Soul love, red squirrel, resourcefulness, vigilance, preparation, busyness, peace, willpower, and oops, <laughs> and finally, violet, spirituality, psychic energy. Okay, so um, one thing that I am noticing is that it's not exact, but these numbers kind of look like a countdown. Um, we, if we just switch these ones, then we have like six, five, four, three, two. So maybe this is spirit saying like union is drawing near, we're in the final countdown, something like that. Um, I'm also noticing that these could be significant ages. We have 43, 33, 23. So there could be something significant happening in this connection when you or this person hits those ages. Um, but let's go through these one by one and look at the different meanings that we have here. So we're starting off with these two cards of grounding and change. Um, there's a couple different ways that I can interpret these. One might be that you met this person when you were going through a kind of transitional period of your life when a lot of things were changing and you might have felt kind of overwhelmed by that like a lot of things were up in the air there's a lot of unknowns you feel kind of all over the place but then with this person's influence in your life you started to feel more grounded. It's like this person brought you back into your body. This person brought you back into the moment. Um, but this could also be the flip side energy. So for some of you, it might have been the opposite where you were at a point in your life where nothing was changing, where things were very stagnant. You were very set in your ways. Um, there wasn't much new energy coming in. And then all of a sudden, when this person entered into your life, that's when things started to change and things started to gain um, momentum. But it does feel like they came into your life and and changed the energy that you were um, experiencing here the i think that's a stork or maybe it's a crane but it's making me think of a stork in the context of this reading when i see a stork in a reading it does make me think of long-term promises long-term ventures so i do think this is your spiritual team saying that there is long-term potential for this connection this is a card that is associated with the root chakra because of the red border so it could be that you guys have a very strong physical connection like physical attraction or physical um, compatibility as well and with these messages of nature and presence i do feel like 
what would really draw you guys to each other is that it feels natural when you're together so you don't have to think too much and you don't have to pretend or worry about how you're coming off it's kind of like you just um get each other and you know no matter which of those two interpretations before that you resonated with i do think that this is a connection that really does make you or encourage you to live in the present moment and really like brings you back to yourself and back to your body. I, I feel like your physical body or physical touch, there's something about that that's very significant. Maybe this person's uh, physical touch calms you down or like you've experienced, if this is that kind of relationship, you've experienced a physical pleasure with this person that is uh, very significant too. But with this grounding card and also with the red squirrel, I get the feeling that Oh, first of all, brownish, reddish hair might be significant because we have this red squirrel. We have the red card here. These people have brownish hair. I guess that could be considered reddish, but maybe you or your person have this color hair. Um, but I was going to say about their personality. I think that they are a very down to earth person. Um, they're very humble. I think they're also very reliable and loyal. Like you can really count on this person. I think it's sort of natural in their personality that they want to be a provider and they would like to be a rock in someone's life. They would like to be the reason uh, somebody knows that everything is going to be okay. I think this is someone who's really sensible. Like maybe they have like a lot of savings for the future or they're they're careful with their money it seems like they're more on the conservative side not necessarily in their views but like in the material sense if that makes sense they seem to be a little bit more um cautious and a little bit more like reserved maybe is the right way to put it with the word busyness here as well and this squirrel who is at work shoving no shoving away acorns <laughs> um i do think that this person has a very good um work ethic is again very responsible i think you guys get the picture i definitely think that this would be a very calming presence to be around um and you would really feel like everything's okay um canada might be significant because i'm seeing this maple leaf here which if you are from canada or they're from canada me too, <laughs> shout out to you. Or they could be from somewhere where there's a lot of squirrels. So like, I know the States has a lot of squirrels too. I'm not sure about other continents, but um, I think like Japan, for example, doesn't have a whole lot of squirrels, but <laughs> um, anyway, moving on. We have soul love here, which is really, really sweet. I think that your soul and this person's soul like each other very, very much. Um, I'm not sure when your two souls met each other, if it was in this lifetime or previous ones. I feel like that information is not really here and it probably doesn't really matter because what matters is that your souls know each other now and your souls like each other now. And you know, this reading is all about being in the present moment and not being concerned with the past or future. I can definitely say that your souls know each other now. Even if you haven't met this person in the 3D yet, I do think your souls are together and in communication. We have the number 33 here, which reminds me of like the third house, which is all about communication. And it also reminds me of the Empress because the Empress is card number three. So it's kind of like they're plotting to create something together. It's interesting that we had the stork as well, because there's that um what would you call it that story about storks bringing babies to people <laughs> like bringing them their children and then the empress is also about motherhood and children so this could be someone that the person that you will have a family with or someone you want to have a family with or this is just your spiritual team saying that the compatibility for that would be very very good i know for sure that this person um, has that instinct in them to be a provider and to be a protector and to nurture people maybe you resonate with that as well and you both have these qualities but i think that this is like a hard working like family person i i kind of get that wholesome vibe from them um 
with peace and then willpower right next to it. I think that this is also someone who's really mastered the art of co-creating with the universe, meaning that they know how to accept situations and people as they are, and they know how to maintain their inner peace and like be at peace with the way things are in their life and in the world. But at the same time, they also recognize when they can take action. And I feel like they're good at you know, not stressing about things that they can't change. And they're also good at like knowing when it's time to step in and use their willpower. So I feel like this is someone who doesn't come up against a lot of like resistance in their life. One thing that I will notice is that I feel like in this group in particular, a lot of the messages are more so about like who this person is and what they're like. So maybe many people who chose this group were kind of wanting confirmation like it, that this is your person because you know we are doing this reading with the assumption that like you know we're talking about your person that you're getting with so maybe a lot of you guys who chose this group had a, a specific someone in mind and you're like listening to this energy check part to figure out if like the person in this reading matches with like your person of interest or the person that you're thinking of um, or the type of person that you'd really like to be with because like this part of the reading is a lot more heavy on um, what they're like, you know? Whereas in the other groups, it, it was more about like the relationship in general, if, if that makes sense. Or maybe for a lot of you, this is someone that you haven't met in the 3D yet and so there's not a lot to talk about in terms of uh, your connection together because it remains to be seen. Um, but what I can say for sure, like from the messages we've seen before, is that there's really high compatibility here. Um, there's really good long-term potential. You're both like a support for each other, a rock for each other. You make each other feel like everything's going to be okay. And then we also have this violet card with spirituality and psychic energy. So I think that you might kind of experience this connection um, spiritually or psychically before you have your 3D union. If you've already met this person, maybe you did kind of sense that they were coming into your life before they did. Um, for some of you, I'm hearing like you knew what they were going to look like or you knew what their personality was going to be like or you were you were experiencing a lot of signs and synchronicities before you met them. If you haven't yet, I... I definitely feel like the union is drawing near because we have this countdown, <laughs> these countdown numbers here. Um, and I also think that coming together with this person could enhance your spiritual abilities or further your interest in delving deeper into your spirituality, especially when it comes to this um, mastering the art of co-creating with the universe. I think that's a big lesson that you would learn from being in this connection. And it may even be um, not only a lesson that you learn from being with this person, but something that you learn um, as part of your journey to union. So there may be times in this journey where you're struggling with this, like when do I use my willpower and, you know, put myself out there and take a step and when am I supposed to just surrender and, and trust that the universe is, is working on it? That's a tricky balance to achieve. I feel like that's something I talk about a lot, but that's like the key. That's like the key to peace and that's the key to living a happy life, I think, is being in that flow. So that's like a big key theme, I think, within this connection. Okay, so we're going to go into... The tarot that you guys chose now, I'm going to do this in the same format as the last time when I uh, did this topic. So we're going to have you on this side and your person on this side. And we're going to pull cards to show the journey or the sequence of events leading up to your union. So yours will go this way and theirs will go this way. And then we'll have the card in the middle that represents your union. Um, as we go through the journeys, you may identify with different parts of the journey. So some of you might feel like, oh, I'm in this first part or I'm in this last part. Um, but the idea is if you identify with the energy that is closer to the middle, then it means that you're closer to the union. And actually, I'm going to sip my water now. So it's, it's less awkward if I do it in the middle of the, I mean, whatever, it's, Good place to take a break is what I'm trying to say. Okay.
group number four. I feel like this tarot deck that you guys chose as well has a very like earthy, homey kind of energy. And that's the vibe that I'm getting from this uh, connection. So for group number four, what, what does the beginning of this journey look like? Uh, this is the King of Swords. Then we have the Eight of Coins. And then the Hierophant. Okay, and then woof, on your person side, we have the Nine of Coins. Then the Eight of Cups and the Five of Swords, and these came out together, so I'm going to leave them together as like one energy. Ooh. Then we have the King of Coins, and this flew out very, very powerfully. I'm going to try to uh, remember that. And then the card to represent your union is the nine of swords so hmm okay it's kind of a challenging energy to have in the middle i'm looking at the bottom of the deck and we have the two of wands so i'm gonna keep these here but one thing i think is really really nice <laughs> i'm just thinking of how this card like shoo, like how this card flew out and this is on your person's side on their journey this represents the stage that they're at right before coming into union with you so i'm kind of thinking of this as like when your physical union is drawing near suddenly your person starts to feel a lot more energy they start to feel more lively they start to feel more motivated you know something their sixth sense is tingling like something exciting is about to happen and they start to feel oh this is actually really sweet as the king of pentacles they start to feel more confident they start to feel more sure of themselves they start to feel more secure i think that's really really sweet especially because we know that your higher selves are kind of already together and, and talking and planning your union. It's almost as if your higher self would be, you know, whispering these kind and encouraging messages into your person's ear as you get closer to the physical union, that they start to feel um, really, really good about themselves. I, oh, <laughs> I love that so much. And you know, it's really cool. Um, for some reason, I feel like working backwards because I want to talk about your, um, like the phase before your union. You have the Hierophant here. Um, Taurus energy could be significant, by the way, with this Hierophant here, um, or Earth energy. But the Hierophant being the number five, this talks about our connection to the 5D, the, our connection to our spiritual self. So it's almost like, the more you start to connect with your higher self, you can feel this union coming on and you can actually, yeah, I guess this would be like your psychic connection because the more in tune you are with your higher self, you can actually connect to and influence this person before you would even meet. So, you know, even to use this tarot reading as an example, or if you're watching any kind of pick a cards about your person and you get this warm and fuzzy feeling like, oh, I love them so much, I can't wait to meet them. That joyful energy that you're exuding in that moment, it's like your higher self is delivering that straight to them. So you're over here in your corner feeling love and joy and excitement for them and they're actually picking up on that and the way that translates for them is that they start to feel very good about themselves they start to feel very positive and i think that's just so incredibly sweet so just know that whenever you feel joy and whenever you feel excitement for this person and whenever you feel love for them they are picking up on that even if they couldn't say ah yes this is me telepathically <laughs> receiving a sign from group four even if they don't have that um awareness i want to tell you that the energy you send to them and the way you think about them really matters and it really makes a difference and the more you connect to your higher self the stronger they're gonna feel the the love and the energy that you send them so 
I think this energy is just very, very sweet. And I just wanted to mention that. Um, but let's do this in the, in the proper order now. So, um, over here with the King of Swords, you know, the King of Swords kind of gives me mixed feelings depending on the context that it's in. In general, in this deck, I do sort of get a more uncomfortable or challenging energy from it because as you can see, there is a blade going through this person's, um, going through this person's head. So it does give me the energy of somebody who is like conflicted, somebody who is overthinking. Um, I think that you guys, you are, you do have a very intelligent mind. Like let's say that right off the bat because you wouldn't be coming through as the King of Swords if you didn't. I think you guys are very smart and I think you're very good at planning and analyzing. But I think that at this stage in the journey, remember that this could also be your past energy because you could like already be over here. Um, but at the beginning of this journey, I think this was when you had to, or when you have to learn a lesson that this rational, logical, planning, analyzing energy doesn't work for everything in life and it should not be applied to everything in life. It's kind of like you might have hurt yourself or confused yourself by trying to apply this logical and analytical nature to things that should really be dealt with using your heart and your intuition. Maybe in some ways this is indicating the time where you started to experience this psychic connection. Maybe in this group, you know, every now and then I get comments like, um, I, I was never a spiritual person. I don't know why your video popped up in my recommended, but this is so crazy. Like people who were kind of skeptical or kind of non-believers or just this kind of stuff is new to them and it's a little bit like spooky <laughs> how it can resonate and how they came across this kind of video. Um, maybe this is representing like you are in that energy or this is representing the point where you were at the beginning of your spiritual journey and you are starting to have this psychic or spiritual experience and I'm not saying you shouldn't analyze what's happening to you, but it was like you were trying to use your head and your logic too much in places where you really should have just been feeling and you really should have just been observing and you really should have just been validating your emotions and saying like, I don't need to put a label on you and I don't necessarily need to understand you yet but I can just acknowledge that you're here and tell you that it's okay to be here and continue to observe you and validate you. I think your heart needed to hear that without the logical part of you constantly nagging them like, hey, what does this mean? Nah, like that. And I'm not judging because I literally have a Gemini moon. So this is like my full-time job, <laughs> um, you know, overthinking and overanalyzing things. But I definitely think that you were in um, that you were in that kind of energy before. There's a couple other ways that I can interpret this. Of course, please feel free to claim which ones resonate or feel free to claim all of them. I think that this could also have to do with you guys being at a point where you were like confused what you wanted to do with your life. Um, and either, I feel like deep down in your heart, you always knew what you wanted to do, but you were scared because you loved it so much and you were scared of it's like the stakes are so high because it's something you really really love and so you're very very scared to put yourself out there with your passion it's like um how can i describe it i i think you guys know what i mean but you know let's say your passion is to become a writer but you're working like a customer service job somebody could say like oh you suck at customer service and you just be like yeah so <laughs> you'd be like i don't care this like i don't give a shit about customer service this isn't my passion like i don't care if i'm terrible but if someone told you that you're a terrible writer or like criticize your work well that's something that is like your baby it's you're an extension of you you really really care about it so you're more scared to put yourself out there in that way but maybe at this point you weren't really ready to acknowledge that and you know, with the King of Swords, it makes me think of plans and strategies. You might've been in this stage where you were just constantly 
planning like what you were gonna do you'd be like yes so on this day i'm gonna write the the plot of my book and then i'm gonna write the first chapter and it feels good in the moment right because you're like yeah i'm getting ready to take action on my dreams but then when it comes to the show time like okay it's actually time to write you're like so anyway about my plan so it could be like you're kind of stuck in this um planning to do it energy um the other interpretation is that you might have just let other people's advice get to you with this sword going through your head. So you really want to be a writer, but then other people around you are saying, oh, you know, you should get a nice, like I'm, I'm from the, the capital of Canada, so there's a lot of government workers. So like adults would say to me, oh, you should get a nice government job. You'll have weekends off and you'll have all the nice benefits or like you should go to school for this and da da da. And like, they mean well, right? But you can start to let that get to you and maybe you think, yeah, maybe I should get a government job. Maybe I should continue in customer service. Like that book thing was silly anyway. And just going with other people's opinions. So that I feel kind of a lost energy from this King of Swords, even though he is a king, I'm, I'm feeling kind of lost energy. Um, and I think that I think with this eight of pentacles here, this is like a practice makes perfect success through repetition, um, trying and trying again. I feel like this is here to say like, please be patient with yourself and, and please don't give up on yourself because, you know, sometimes it takes like, you know what your passion is and it takes you a million tries to work up the courage or it takes you a million tries to make something that you're proud of or it takes you a million tries to finally leave your unfulfilling situation and that's okay as long as as long as you get there in the end and as long as you don't give up on yourself it's okay so it might with this eight of pentacles here it might take you like many tries to get out of this energy and I think it's just here to say that's okay practice makes perfect and I think this way you can know that when you do make that shift you really mean it and you're really committed and it's really here to stay the hierophant is an energy that makes me think of like um, committing to your long-term future, planning for your long-term future and committing to yourself and maybe it's like when you guys became um, aware of spirituality and started on your spiritual journey you started to really realize like the direction that your soul was calling you into maybe for some of you guys the hierophant is you going back to school and maybe that could be where you meet this person because the hierophant also talks about um, like teachers and education and things like that um, yeah so you could definitely meet this person I feel like with the king of pentacles here as well it's either like a school environment or a work environment it, it kind of feels like a professional or more serious environment so to speak because um, the Hierophant and the King of Pentacles are more kind of serious and mature and traditional figures so I, I feel like it's not really like you would meet this person at um, a party or something like that you know what I mean it's like you're there to fulfill responsibilities and maybe you're kind of on the same Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm. This is starting to kind of come together. Um, maybe you're kind of on the same path. I think it's like your educational or professional paths that will align you to each other. But it's when you, it's when you start really following your heart, and it's when you make the choice not to give up on yourself, and when you choose to commit to what you really want to do, that you would, um, that you would line up with this person. Mm -hmm. So over here on their end, we have the Nine of Pentacles. I feel like, yeah, this person was also, you guys kind of have similar stories. This person is also doing something else at first and then, and then moved on. Like maybe this is a situation where like you guys both had a career change and you ended up together or like you both like a you change your majors or you both decide to go back to school or something like that um or maybe you guys both go to the same like training program or the same course because i i feel like 
how you come into union is that you're going to get partnered up uh, somehow through like a shared, like you're working on something together. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Um, but yeah, I think that this person was doing something that made them a lot of money and that they kind of lived a dream life. Like people, maybe they were like self-employed and had a free schedule and, and made a lot of money. Um, and people like outsiders would look at that and say like, wow, they're living such a good life. But I feel like deep down there was something that's missing because the next cards that we have here is the Eight of Cups and the Five of Swords. The Eight of Cups talks about walking away from something that is not fulfilling you. So it's like they had everything but the emotional fulfillment. You know, they maybe had the dream schedule, the dream uh, house, the dream lifestyle. But when it came to their emotional fulfillment... Um, something was missing and with the five of swords here i also think like both of you guys could relate to maybe having experiences where you built your life off of someone else's idea of happiness because the five of swords is about like conflicting opinions or like technically it's arguments but i'm thinking of it as like you don't agree with someone else or you don't agree with society and i think I think it took a lot of courage for this person, or it will if they haven't reached this yet. It will take a lot of courage for this person to walk away because I feel like, you know, the Knight of Pentacles is a very nice card. Usually I would think of this as like, you're living your best life. So even I'm surprised, like anyone would think they're like, yeah, I'm loving life. I'm living my best life, but they're not fulfilled. That, that That's not what they want. They want to walk away. So it's like they can practically hear people in their life being like, are you crazy? And, you know, maybe there's a lot of people who look up to them and they don't want to let them down. Um, this is a very weird example, but let's say someone's like a famous singer <laughs> and they have a lot of fans and they know that they've helped a lot of fans through tough times and they have a very special relationship with their fans. Imagine if they come out and say like, I want to quit music or I don't like, I don't like this anymore. I want to do something else these people that they've built a loyal bond with that could kind of hurt their feelings, right? Like, because I, I thought we had this special relationship and I thought you liked what you were doing. You know, it's like there might be some people who want to keep them frozen where they are and keep them as this preserved version of them that they could relate to, this preserved version of them that they were comfortable with. And they're like, no, I want to change. I want to evolve. I I need... I need that emotional fulfillment too. Um, and they could also feel guilty because it's like anyone would be technically grateful to have this lifestyle, at least in the material sense. So like, who am I to walk away from it? Am I crazy? You know, that they don't want to come off like ungrateful or, or something like that. I think it takes a lot of courage for them to make this transition the five of swords can also talk about internal conflict so them too like these are very similar energies it might take them many many times as well before they finally work up the courage and before um before they finally uh before they finally move on um ah uh, and this makes this energy so much sweeter because i bet you when this person walks away when this person makes this transition and they're kind of feeling down, oh my gosh, I feel so emotional. And they're, and they're feeling like, did I make a mistake? Did I do the wrong thing? Am I on the wrong path? Your higher self is coming in and sending love to them and giving them this huge burst of confidence and this huge burst of certainty so that they can say, yes, I did the right thing. And I can just see them like, I feel like on their end, they don't know where that energy is coming from, but suddenly their spirits are lifted and they're like, I just have a good feeling about this. I just know that I'm on the right path. And I actually feel like I could cry right now because I think it's just so beautiful how like, why am I getting so emotional? I think it's so beautiful how you guys could be... Okay, um, I'm like full on crying right now, just so you know, and um, I do get teary eyed. By the way, I'm laughing at myself crying. I'm not laughing at you. I just I just wanted to make that clear. Um, 
I do get teary-eyed sometimes during readings. I do get emotional, um, but it's kind of rare that I'm like fully crying. Um, but I just think it's so beautiful how like, even if we're not together physically, we're together in spirit and we can still be there for each other through struggles and we can still lift each other's spirits. And I think if you ever feel like a sudden burst of joy or you feel really confident, you're really feeling yourself, it could be in those very moments that, um, that this person is sending love to you. Do I need to like take a moment? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I'm just, yeah, uh, girls crying. So anyway, um, let's look at this, um, this middle energy here. Again, I feel like you guys, the, the vibe that I got from this is like you're partnered up for a project. So again, if this is a school environment, it could be like you're put together for some assignment or you're sitting next to each other. Or um, if this is a work situation, like you're on the same team, you're in the same department, you're carrying out a task together. Maybe one of you has to answer to the other person uh, or something like that. But the two of wands talks about partnerships and it talks about opportunities as well. So I think you're like getting the chance to come together and, and work on something together or just like your professional, educational, creative paths cause you to cross paths. Um, and then we have the nine of swords here as well. So there's going to be some, there's going to be some anxiety when the two of you come together. And, you know, at first I was kind of concerned to see this card because I'm like, I don't want your union to be the nine of swords, but honestly, it kind of makes sense because I feel like before you guys come into a physical union, you've received a lot of love from each other's higher self. Like this person's higher self has sent you so much love on your journey and vice versa. But I think that when you meet in the 3D, you're not necessarily making that connection. And I think that you might feel kind of like, just at first, you might feel kind of um, insecure around each other. Or I don't know if I would go so far to say, um, inferior, but there's the, the feeling of overthinking your interactions. And like, I hope, I hope I'm good enough for them. I do think this energy is going to fade away quickly because we have this really lovely, um, grounding energy that I have not forgotten about, but you know, let's say you are like working on some project together and then you're thinking like, Oh, I, this person is so smart, this person is so talented, this person is so attractive, and, and you're worrying like if you're attractive enough for them, if you can keep up with them, and if, you know, if they think you're XYZ enough, you know, like kind of worrying about how you come across in their eyes. And it's like, do you, oh, okay, so you clearly don't realize that <laughs> all of those times before, my higher self was hyping you up. My higher self was sending you so much love. Like you don't realize that the person standing in front of you whose judgment you're so worried about is actually the person who's been showering you <laughs> with love this whole time. Because if you knew, if you knew that you wouldn't be freaking out right now. Does that make sense? Like this is the very person who's who's loved you for so long in the spirit realm. But when you're in front of the 3D version, you're panicking because it's like you need to make that connection that like this is them. This is the yeah, I was going to say like, I guess, I mean, this kind of gave away a, a soul connection, but like <laughs> this is the soulmate or this is the very fond soul that you've been feeling this whole time. That energy that feels so warm and fuzzy, like that's this vessel, that's this meat sack, that's this avatar. So you got to chill around each other and you got to feel this grounding energy. And I, I think that you will eventually, but um, it really kills the joy, you know, because when you're working together, we have these beautiful red and orange flowers. It's passion, it's excitement, it's creativity. Um, but yeah, it just seems like a little uh, kind of awkward energy at the beginning. But this 
concludes the how section of this reading. So we're going to move into the when now. Um, like I said before, I'm going to pull for the specific time frames first, and then I'm going to pull the cards to see what could uh, speed it up or slow it down. So for group number four, what would be the faster time frame here? Um, we have waxing gibbous. So that means when the moon is almost full, I believe. Yes, that's when the moon is starting to become full. For this, I would say because it's past a half moon, right? It's past the first quarter. It's in the second quarter. So I would say this is three to six months. And then what would be the slower time frame? So for the slower, oh, interesting. For the slower time frame, we have waning gibbous. So this is six to nine months. So it's really not that different. <laughs> um, what did I say? The fast one is three to six. The slow one is six to nine. So like, I feel like this is saying six months, give or take. But let's take a look at the tarot cards as well. So I'm bringing out a different tarot deck now and we're gonna see what could like speed up or slow down this process. That's so funny that you got a waxing gibbous and a waning gibbous. Okay. So for group number four, what could, wow. <laughs> That was very fast. What could potentially speed up their union? We have the King of Wands confidently and boldly going after the life that you want and not giving a shit what other people are gonna think. I feel like I don't really need to elaborate on that because it relates to your situation, it relates to their situation. You gotta go for it. You gotta prioritize your passion and take charge of your life. And what could make what could make you know what's interesting uh you know how companies have like quarters right like the first quarter the second quarter maybe like every if you guys are coming together in a company like if you resonate with that because they these are like increments of three months you know these time frames so maybe it's like it just depends what quarter you get hired in you know so like if you're a little bit hesitant then you will get hired in the later quarter because you're you know showing up to the job later or if it's a school situation there's like semesters as well which would be the increment of six months so it's like it depends if you go in the spring semester or the fall semester or something like that um what could slow down what could slow down this uh Union we have the magician. So what is standing out to me with this magician is that we cannot see the magician's face and I think that you are the magician deep down You're the person who's going to manifest your dream life. You're the person who's gonna Create the experiences that you want with your willpower. So I feel like this is representing you not knowing who the magician is, not recognizing that the magician is you, that the person who has the power to change your life is you, staying in the dark about your true power. You guys might be, it's like you're asking the universe, you're asking your guides, you're asking spirit. It's like you, you don't know who to pray to, but but you just need to, I know, I guess it sounds weird to say pray to yourself, but to declare to yourself. Oh, you know, it's so cool. They're both wearing uh, red cloaks. So it's like when you take the hood down and they, this card also has reddish brownish hair. When you take the hood down, you'll realize that the magician is you. That the person who has the power is you. So I think you're bound to realize your power. It's really just a matter of time. I'm not too worried about this difference in, you know, the earlier one or the later one. It's going to happen eventually. And it's only, it looks like it's only a matter of a few months anyways. Um, 
I don't think there's much that could like screw up this union as long as it's something that you really want, but it kind of depends, I guess, how long you would stay in the dark about the power that you have to create the life that you desire. But group four, these are all the messages I have for you. So I'm going to end your reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose a topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song. So if you're interested in listening to that one or any of my other songs, uh, the music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group four, I'm sending lots of love to you, to your person, and to your spiritual teams, and I'm wishing you all the best in this journey, and thank you for giving me that lovely emotional experience. <laughs> also, I just saw 4444, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!